The cavalcade of sports is on the air. Gillette presents the World Series for the fifth consecutive year. This is Rand Palmer speaking from Yankee Stadium in New York, where the stage is set for the opening game of the 1943 baseball classic between the New York Yankees and the St. Louis Cardinals. Your radio host is the Gillette Safety Razor Company, which broadcasts the Kentucky Derby, football, bowl games, major boxing shows, and other top sports events for your enjoyment the year round. Today's presentation is carried over an international network embracing the Mutual Broadcasting System, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, and their affiliates, more than 340 stations in all. Lieutenant Bob Elson of the United States Naval Reserve and Bill Corum are here in the booth with me to help give you an accurate picture of every play when today's opener gets underway in 14 minutes. Right now, at home plate, posing for the photographers are the two starting pitchers. Left-hander Max Lanier for the St. Louis Cardinals and right-hander Bud Chandler for the New York Yankees. The Yankees themselves are finishing their infield workout. Art Fletcher has the fungo stick. The infield is Etten at first base, Gordon at second, at shortstop is Frankie Crusetti, and at third base is Bill Johnson. That'll be the starting infield for the Yankees. The outfielders also are catching fly balls and throwing in toward the plate. A very business-like performance at the moment by a team which has, uh, under McCarthy, been in eight World Series in recent years, and they have uh, been in seven in the last eight. So they should appear to be the most businesslike. And at the moment, Spud Channel begins warming up his right arm, and Max O'Neill begins warming up his left one for the Yankees and the Cardinals, respectively. This may be the crowd. I'll be very interested in hearing what Bill Corum has to say in a couple of moments. This may be the biggest all-time crowd yet. At any rate, Charlie McManus, the veteran here at Yankee Stadium, told me that this has been an odd crowd in the sense that for the first time that he knows of, there was not any great press all night long for the bleacher seats. In other words, there were some people at the bleachers early this morning, but there were more people early this morning at the 3.30 windows for the general uh, admission to the main stand, which he said is the first time that's happened in his experience. And while the crowd didn't come so early, for the bleachers and for the general admissions, they did keep coming steady. And they looked pretty solid upstairs which, uh, and in the corners, which is the best uh, criterion we have to go on now at the moment. Here are the batting orders. I know that that's what you want to know. For the defending world champion Cardinal, Lou Klein, finishing up a great rookie year, is leading off at second base. Harry Walker, hitting number two in center field. He's taken the place and very creditably... Uh, Terry Moore, who is here as a private in the Army. Sam Musial, the league's leading batter with the lofty mark of 357, is in right field, and his ankle is perfectly all right. Captain Walker Cooper is catching. He hit 319. George Kowalski, and he said that the stadium looked to him uh, as though it hadn't changed at all since the last time he played here, which uh, he broke up, by the way, a ball game hitting a home run. Kowalski at third. Sam was at first base. Danny Litwala... Finishing his first year with the Cardinals, he came to them in a big deal after the season had gotten underway from the Phillies. Danny Litwala in left. Then comes Slat Murray on the great fielding shortstop. And the pitcher is Lanier, who won 15 and lost 7 in the pennant race. For the Yankees, Stane back in right field is leading off. South for starting for St. Louis. Then comes the great veteran in shortstop, Frank Crisetti. Bill Johnson, the steady young man who's finished a magnificent rookie campaign at third base. Charlie Callas. One of the strongest ball players physically in the history of the game. Put on quite a show in batting practice. Keller in left. Joe Gordon, who had the great series in 41 and a rather disappointing one last year, and so people don't know just what to expect. Joe Gordon at second base. The magnificent Bill Dickey is catching. Then comes Nick Etten, who was with the Phillies last year and has had a very fine campaign his first in the American League. Johnny Lindell in center field. Last year this time... He was a pitcher who was not good enough to pitch for the Yankees in the series. And this year, he's the center fielder. Lindell in center. Then comes Spud Chandler. And you have to go back to the heyday of Walter Johnson for a pitcher who's been as effective in a course of a season as Spud. And now, we're going to switch over to Bill Corum and hear from him. Bill? Thanks, Red, and good afternoon, fam. Particularly those of you in the service of your country, of whom we here in the nation where baseball is king are so proud. I don't know whether you ever happen to think of it in this light, but the World Series is America's only annual national festival. 
This year, more than ever, it is an around-the-world World Series. And we know from last fall that some of you who are listening to these words are a long way from the friendly fields of home where baseball is played. To you, most of all, we begin the broadcast of this 40th World Series with our greetings and deep and abiding good wishes. We of Gillette deem it a great privilege to be able to bring you these games. Exactly one year ago to the day, October the 5th, 1942, we sat in this same broadcasting booth and saw peppery little Jimmy Brown snatch a ground with grounder off the bed of Big Red Ruffing and fire it into the eager mitt of Johnny Hopp. As that throw found its mark, the St. Louis Cardinals were the baseball champions of the world. Jimmy Brown's in the Army now. So is Rufus the Red, one of the great series pitchers of all time. So is the lion-hearted Johnny Beasley, now Lieutenant John Beasley, the freshman pitcher who won two games for the not-to-be-denied cards in that series and bested the veteran roughing in the final set two. Joe DiMaggio, the Yankee Clipper, has gone into the service too, as has his rival in center field, the wide-ranging, rifle-throwing Terry Moore. Country Slaughter is with them in uniform, and so is little Skeeter Rizzuto, star of last year's Yankee lost call. The Skeeter is now a sailor man. But he was around the stadium here the other day looking more like a little boy playing sailor in his dark blue uniform than a grown warrior in the greatest test of manhood and courage in the history of mankind. To these and the others who have moved on into the real World Series, we also send our greetings and congratulations. But there are good players left on the Cardinal and Yankee teams that are going to begin their return meeting in just a few moments now. Good players who make two fine teams. The best in their respect to respective league by far, if we are to believe the figures of the final standing. It's a sure thing that these teams are going to stage another thrilling series, so it'll have to be something to top the one that was won and lost when Whitey Karowski lifted a home run just inside the left field line in the waning light of that October 5th a year ago. Whitey is still there on third base to do it again for the card, if he can, just as Marty Marion, the fellow who slapped Walker Cooper's throw on Joe Garden when Joe was caught off second in that memorable ninth inning is back at his old stand at shortstop. And Bill Dickey, Ruffing's battery mate, the Iceman in the Iron Mask, is still in his old familiar position behind the plate for the always hard-to-handle Yankee. Why, Bill has been behind that plate here in the stadium so long, he could file squatters' rights on the land. Yes, it's going to be a great series, I'm sure. So let's get on with the first act of the new show. We all know who won last time cards and four games out of five. What we want to know now and are going to see right away is who can get the jump this time. The Yankees are the favorites at eight to five for this game with Fred Chandler, their best pitcher in the box. For the series, the price is six and a half to five, still favoring the Yankees. Persians, Fred Chandler, brilliant right-hander of the Mc- from Moultrie, Georgia, won 20 and lost four this year and had an unofficial earned run average of 167. And as Red told you, you have to go way back to Sir Walter Johnson to find anything to top that in the American League. Max Veneer, Stocky South Ball from Denton, North Carolina, won 15 and lost 7 this season. Uh, there's been quite a question about Morton Cooper's pitching arm, and uh, uh, right to the last minute, a lot of discussion about it. So I just came off the field five minutes ago when I talked to him, and Morton said he never felt better in his life. A few changes that we've got in place of Jimmy Brown at second base for the Cards, Lou Klein. He's a New Orleans boy and a good ball player. I think he's tightened up the Cardinal infield, if anything. George Chuck Stainback is in the outfield instead of DiMaggio. The veteran Frank Crosetti is down there for Rizzuto. A great ball player, Crosetti, and a great money player. Harry Walker is in the place of Terry Moore. And Terry Moore, to my mind, was the best center fielder I ever saw in fielding alone. As an all-around player, perhaps the Maggio topped them, certainly topped them in the hitting department, but last year I felt that Moore could go as far as even the great Dimaggio or any man I ever saw, including Speaker, in center field. Of course, in right field we have Stan Musio, a boy from Denora, Pennsylvania, who got most of his playing start down in Daytona Beach, Florida, yet the great hitter of the National League who has batted 357 this year. He takes the place of Eno's country slaughter. Danny Litwiler's in left field for the Cardinals, an old Philly, and at first base for the Yankees is Nick Hatton, also a former member of the Phillies. Now, last year, Ruffing won the first game, which was the only one that the Yankees won, and then lost the last one, but I'm not going to have a great deal more time to talk to you here. 
It's just a pleasure to work with Red and Bob Elson again. And what I've told you is how it looks to me from where I sit in the broadcasting booth at the Yankee Stadium. And just before we came on here, I was down in the dugout getting lined up for the broadcast. And Stan Musial mentioned to me, with a certain amount of surprise, that he asked for Gillette Blue Blades in a St. Louis store the other day and couldn't get any. Some of you fans, particularly in defense areas, may have had a similar experience in recent months. And if so, here's the reason. Razor blade manufacture is restricted by the government to save steel. Also, much of Gillette's output is earmarked for our armed forces. So the civilian supply is limited, and dealers occasionally run short of these easier shaving blades. It's a good idea, therefore, to ask for a package before you get on to your last blade. Should your dealer be temporarily out of stock, have him set a package aside when he receives his next shipment. This way, you avoid inconvenience and shaving discomfort, too. The Trumbuck Address System at Yankee Stadium is giving out the batting orders, which we've already given you, and which Bob Elson, just before the first pitch takes place, will check again. At the moment... There is an eight-man conference at home plate. Art Fletcher, the uh, first base, the third base coach of the New York Yankees, is up there with the Yankee batting order, and Captain Walker Cooper, the catcher for the Cardinals, is up with his batting order. The other six men are in blue. They are the umpires. Eddie Rommel of the American League staff will be working balls and strikes back of the plate. Means Redden of the National League staff will be at first base. Joe Rowe of the American League at second. Saki Bill Stewart of the National at third. The alternating umpires, that is in the event that something unforeseen happens to one of the uh, first name four, George Pipgrass of the American League and Jocko Conlon of the National. The reason for the uh, alternates in the way of umpires was brought out here in 1938 at this very series when Uncle Charlie Moran was badly bruised when hit in the mouth with a thrown ball by Joe Gordon. However, he stuck to it stayed in there, very Spartan-like, but uh, that experience was taken to heart, and since that series and that experience, there have always been two alternate umpires sitting uh, alongside first row in the dugouts. Bob Elson will be over here in just a moment. It's a warm, great pleasure to be working another World Series for Gillette with Bob. We've gone back through the years together a great many. And just as keen as is our pleasure in having Bob here... Just as keen do we miss Mel Allen, who was with us this time last year when Bob couldn't be. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem. the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. And there she rides. Lovely sight. All glory. High up on the flag there. Out in deep center field. And another mighty roar as the Yankees go out to take the field. Chandler hasn't started for the mound yet. And so, it's good luck to Private Mel Allen down in South Carolina. And it's good luck to Bob Elson Lieutenant Bob Elson of the Navy as he moves in toward the microphone. And one formality, and then we will be actually underway on Gillette's fifth consecutive World Series broadcast. We pause now for station identification. This is Mutual. 
This is WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago. And now, friends, the Bob Elson. Good afternoon, fans. Thank you very much, Red Barber. It's great to be back with you on this Gillette show with Bill Carm again. And it's a wonderful sight we have in front of us here, this first game of the World Series, and it should be a wonderful game. This uh, broadcast of the World Series is being set around the world. It's aimed particularly at our servicemen in all sections of the world. Uh, the sponsor was anxious to have a serviceman participate in the broadcast, and I'm certainly very, very happy to be here. The Yankees in their white uniforms around the field. Spurgeon Chandler, a right-hander and a great right-hander, is on the mound getting his practice throws with Phil Dickey. By the way, our mutual booth is high up in the second deck, right back at the home plate. The St. Louis Cardinals are wearing gray uniforms with red undershirts, red socks, a black cap with a bright red peak. Uh, we're looking directly down on home plate right now as the Yankees pepper that ball around the infield. The outfield is uh, all set with Lindell in center field, Keller in left field, and Stain back in right field as we look out onto the field. Around the Yankee infield is Johnson at third, Presetti at short, Gordon at second, Nick Etten at first, Dickey back of the plate, Chandler the pitcher. He's won uh, this season 20 and 4, had a marvelous earned run average of a little over a run and a half a ball game. And the first man to face him is going to be the great little second baseman of the Redbirds of St. Louis, Luke Klein. The umpires are just making sure that all the bandsmen are off the field. They're out there entertaining in center field. The umpire back of the plate, by the way, is Rommel of the American League, Beans Reardon of the National at first, Joe Rue of the American at second, and Stewart of the National at third. Klein's batting average for the year is 285. You know, only the last game of the World Series is more important than the first on the record. As a matter of fact, only eight teams in the total of 39 World Series played since 1903 have been able to come off a defeat in the opening game to win the championship. Here's the first pitch of the series, and it's a ball, a little bit high and outside. Chandler takes a look around the infield and outfield again just to check up on all his teammates to be sure they're set. Ball one is the first pitch to Luke Klein, a right-hand hitter. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses one that time. It was a sharp curve, waist high, right on the corner. And Klein, a red two in the back of his gray uniform, really took a poke at that ball. Bill Johnson at third base in just a foot or two. Short stop for Setti deep. The outfield swung just a bit to the left. Here's the next pitch, and there is a beautiful pitch right in across the waist, and it's a call strike. So the count is ball one and strike two on Klein. First man to bat, first game of the World Series, Yankee Stadium, New York City. Chandler against Max Manier. Here comes the next pitch. There is a fly ball to center field. The center fielder Lindell going to his left, and he grabs the ball for the first out. So fans listening in all sections of the United States, right down this eastern coast of Florida, across the country to Texas, and up the west coast, up there to Oregon and Washington, and back across the country again, wherever you may be listening, the first out was made on a fly ball to center field. Now the next man to bat is Harry Walker, the center fielder. Harry Walker comes up, the center fielder, a left-hand batter. Walker's average for the year is 295. He took the place of Terry Moore, the great ball hawk of the St. Louis Cardinals for many years. And this fellow has done a very fine job out there. He bats left-handed. He's up in there now, rather cloudy in the plate. And here's the first pitch, and it's a beautiful pitch. A curved ball right over the inside corner around his knees for a call strike. One out and nobody on. Third baseman Johnson is playing Walker in much closer than he was the first hitter. He's way in almost to the edge of the grass. The right fielder, Stainback is playing this hitter deep. He's a good pull hitter. Here comes the next pitch, and there's a fast low one for a ball that Harry Walker stepped away from. He has a red pen in the back of his gray uniform. And Bill Dickey steps out in front of the plate very nonchalantly and just lobs the ball back to Spurgeon Chandler. We're in the first half of the first inning at New York City with one out, nobody on. First game of the World Series, Chandler against Lanier. Here comes the pitch. There's a swing and a long fly ball way back into right field. Stainback is back under this ball. He should get it, and he does. That ball was hit solidly by Walker. It drove uh, Stainback in right field to that green wall, 344 feet from home plate, but he pulled that ball down. So there is two gone. Now here is baseball star hitter Stan Musio, one of the great hitters of baseball, coming up to the plate. He bats 357, and this kid can really give that baseball a ride. Not only that, he's a great outfielder. He's got a good arm out there, and he is really one of the great uh, young ball players of our time. He stands pretty far away from the plate, by the way. Left-hand hitter in the first pitch looked like a sinker. It was low, and it's ball one. Chandler walks in in front of the plate, 
uh, in front of the mound, just three or four feet to say something to umpire Rommel. He shouted something at him, but I just couldn't catch what it was. And it's ball one for Musial. Two out and nobody on. Two fly balls and the first two men up. Chandler getting his sign, leans over, starts that wind up. Here comes the pitch, and there's a nice one right in around his knees for a call strike. This fellow Chandler has about everything out there that a pitcher has to have. Great curve, fast ball, beautiful change of pace. One of the few right-handers that throws a screwball. Ball, it's low, and it's ball two and strike one. They're working very carefully on this musial because this fellow can really hit a long ball. He's the number three man in the St. Louis batting order. There's two out already, nobody on. His average for the year is 3-5-7. New Zealand today will play right field. Chandler's all set. Here's the next pitch, and it just missed the corner above the knees for ball three. So it's a 3-1 count. This could easily become the first walk of the 1943 World Series if Musial is able to work him for another ball. Chandler getting his sign, the 3-1 pitch. He swings, there's a fly ball in the left center field. It's in short left center. Lindell coming in, he grabs the ball, and it retires the ball. And so, fans, it's three up and three down. Nothing across in the first half of the first inning of the first game of the World Series. Musial hit that 3-1 pitch into left center field, and Lindell came in fast to grab it. And it's nothing across. I was telling you before that only eight teams in a total of 39 World Series played since 1903. There have only been eight occasions when the team that lost the first game was able to come off that defeat to win a championship. As you remember, the St. Louis Cardinals did it last year, losing the first game in St. Louis and then coming on to win the next four. But you cannot minimize the importance of the opening game of the World Series. That edge is terrific. I believe that this is one of the finest matched series that we'll have in a long time. Both these teams are great teams. Uh, neither one of them are as strong as they were last year, but they are great teams, and they have, they're both equally determined to win this series. Joe McCarthy wants to prove that it was all a mistake last year. In fact, this World Series is a crusade with him, not a challenge. I don't think he's forgotten the last series since the last out was made. And Billy Southworth wants to prove to every National League fan in the country that last year's win over the Yankees was no fluke. So believe me, there's plenty riding on this World Series this year of 43. Now the first man to bat for the Yankees coming up to the plate is going to be Tucker Stainback, who's played in both leagues. He's playing right field today. He's batting 260 for the season. He's played with the Yankees against left-hand hitters, and Lanier is getting all set. The first pitch was a beautiful curve in around his knees for his strike. Roski playing third, Marion playing short, Klein at second, and at first base is Sanders. In the outfield... For St. Louis, we have Musial in right field, Walker in center field, and Litwater in left field. Here's the next pitch. He swung at a very sharp breaking curve ball that was low outside that time, and it's two strikes on Stainback. Artie Fletcher is coaching at third, and Earl Combs coaching at first. Our mutual broadcasting booth is right above the home plate. There has not been a hit in the game as yet. We're in the last half of the first inning. Max Lanier is getting his sign. Here's the next pitch, and it's a ball. It's in very close above his knees, and it's ball one and strike two. Lanier's record for the year... He's won 15 ball games and lost seven. He's a very ch chunky looking southpaw. He stands five feet ten and a half and weighs 187 pounds and he's plenty cagey. There's a foul into the stands to the right, right next to Judge Landis's booth. It's a count of ball one and strike two on Stainback. White uniform. Right down below us here, the first man to bat for the Yankees in the first game of the World Series. There is no score. Chandler and Lanier. He's getting ready again. Here's the next pitch. There's a smash, a line drive to the third baseman Karaski, who caught it going to his left and staying back is out. The ball was well tagged. It was a liner that he caught shoulder high, running to his left. Cardinals pepper that ball around the infield. Now here's Frankie Crisetti. Crisetti has been a part of this Yankee scheme of things for many, many years. A great little ball player, Crisetti, even though he is hitting only 233 for the season right-handed batter, that familiar one in the back of his white uniform. Here's the pitch from Lanier. It's fast and high. A fast ball. It was right up around his chin, and it's ball one. Walker playing in left center field. The outfield has moved in a bit for Cressetti. He's not a what we would call a long ball hitter, although he occasionally can poke one. There's a very sharp curve that caught the outside corner knee high, and it's one and one. This Lanier can really break off that curve ball. He occasionally whips through with that fast ball. He's got a beautiful change of pace, and he really has the heart of a lion out there. No score. Last half of the first inning at New York. First game of the World Series. Chandler and Lanier.
There's not been a hit as yet in the game. Just as Lanier got set to wind up that time after taking the signal from Walker Cooper, the batter changed his mind and stepped out of the box. He said he stepped out, got a little dirt on his hands. Now he's up in there again. Lanier is getting all set. Suits way over. Swings around. There's a ground ball out to the shortstop. Marion in fast. There goes the peg. It's not close. He's out. By five or six feet at first base, the play was not close. And he goes out from Martin Marion to Sanders. Cardinals gather in back of the pitcher's mound and peg that ball around. There's a great young ball player coming up to the plate now, Bill Johnson of the Yankees. First year man with the Yankees, and what a bang up job he's done for our, in place of our old friend Red Rowe. Johnson batting 279, a right hand hitter who can really give that ball a ride. The first pitch to him is fast as and straight as a string, right down the middle, and it's one strike. Two out and nobody on. Yankees batting, last half of the first inning. Chunky Max Lanier, a great little left-hander who won 15 and lost 7, is on the mound for the Redbirds. Swings around. Here's the next pitch. It's fast and high and outside. Just between the waist and the shoulder, but a little bit closer to the shoulder and way outside. Walker Cooper had to reach way out for it. That makes it a ball, one strike, one count. Now Lanier is getting all ready again. Here's the next pitch. There is a foul. It goes into the upper deck. It's out of play. Off here to the right into the upper stands. By the way, Yankee Stadium is absolutely jammed. Jammed right to capacity, right to the rafters, and it's a beautiful sight. A big double-deck stand from the right field line right down here to home plate, all the way down the left field line, extends double-deck into left field and into right field, and then there's an uncovered bleacher all the way around center field. Attendance of around 70,000. We'll have the official on it before you a little bit later in the game. There's tremendous interest in this series, fans. He's getting all set again. Here's the next pitch. There is a... He started to swing that time and stopped, and the umpire says no swing, and it's a ball. Makes the count 2-2. Now some of those, even though this is New York, there are plenty of National League rulers here, and some of them thought that he had taken his half swing on the ball. The umpire says no. It's a ball, two strike, two count. Two out and nobody on. Last half of the first inning. Max Lanier on the mound. He's getting all ready again. Here comes the next pitch. He struck him out. It was a beautiful pitch. Right over the outside corner, knee high, and Johnson is called out on strike. And so it is three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. That is the end of the first inning of the World Series game. Lou Klein, who leads off for the St. Louis Cardinals, says that Gillette Lather Shaving Cream is the fastest acting beard softener he's ever used. And that's because this cream holds a barrel of water and keeps your whiskers thoroughly saturated all the time you're shaving. Now, you see if Lou isn't right. Try Gillette Lather Shaving Cream. Enjoy the quickest and by far the easiest, best-looking shades of your life. Second inning, and Bob Elson. Thank you, Red. You know, fans, I believe that uh, a lot of people around the country feel that uh, when the left-hander goes to the mound, that the Yankees are not apt to, sh to show up for the ball game. Uh, at least that's what a lot of National League partisans think, because uh, a lot of people feel that the Yankees are so ineffective against left-hand pitching. Now, that's far from the truth. In fact, here is the season's record against left-handers. The Yankees won 23 ball games while losing 13 for a percentage of 639. Get that. Against right-handers, they won 75 ball games and lost 43, a percentage of 636. So the Yankees won more ball games, played better against left-hand pitching than they did against right-hand pitching. That is a little, uh, I believe, important note. It gives you uh, at least the true picture that Yankees really uh, are not scared by left-hand pitching, uh, as a lot of people seem to think. Now we're going into the first half of the second inning of the ball game with Spud Chandler out there on the mound and Walker Cooper, the great catcher of the Cardinals, batting 319 is up. There's a high bouncing ball off the third baseman's glove. I believe it'll be a hit safe at first. He had a high bouncing ball off of Bill Johnson, the third baseman's glove. He went to his left, and I believe it will be scored as a base hit, and if it is, it will be the first hit of the ball game. Here it comes now. It is a hit. Score that as the first hit of the 1943 World Series. Here's little Whitey Karaski batting 287, a great third baseman, and this boy can really poke that baseball. First pitch he was going to bunt, it was wide, and it's ball one. Nick Etten at first base comes rushing in. That was a very high bouncing ball off of Walker Cooper's bat that was fired to the left of the third baseman, Bill Johnson. He was lucky to get his glove on it. He deflected it away from the shortstop, and it rolled into short left field. Ball one for Karaski, man on first for the Redbirds. Here it is. Shoots a punt right out in front of the plate. The pitcher handling the ball. The play is to first. He's out at first. The play going from Spurgeon Chandler to Gordon, who moved over on the attempted sacrifice, and the sacrifice was good. Karaski laid down a perfect bunt, and he is out at first. 
the play going from pitcher to first with Gordon covering. And so there's a man on second, and for the first time in the series, we have a man in a scoring position. Now here's Ray Sanders, the first baseman, one of the two. He alternated quite a bit this year with Johnny Hopp, but I believe he played more games than Hopp did. Nice, tall, good-looking athlete, batting 283, and the first pitch pulled in completely. It was a nice curve in around his knees for a call strike. Man on second base for St. Louis in the first half of the second inning with one out. The outfield playing Sanders practically straight away, even though he's left-handed. This fellow hits a lot to left and a lot to right. He's apt to hit it any place when he gets a hold of it. Yes, sir, we have two southern farmhands, two southern boys, Lanier of North Carolina and Spud Chandler of Georgia, as the boys out in the center of the arena today in this first game of the 1943 World Series. And believe me, this is a big, crucial ball game. And on second for St. Louis, left-hand hitter up at Saunders, the first baseman. There's been one hit so far in the ball game. Chandler getting all set. Two strikes on this hitter. Here's the pitch. He swung and he struck out. He went for that screwball that time, right in around his knees. As I was telling you before, Raleigh Hensley told me before the game that Chandler is one of the few good right-handers that whips that screwball in, and he threw it right in there around the knees that time, and Saunders went for it and struck out. So that is two gone now. That is a strikeout for Chandler and gives them each a strikeout and the next man to come up is the former National Leaguer the outfielder of the Philadelphia Phils Danny Litwaller who came to the St. Louis Cardinals in the middle of the year in a deal that sent Buster Adams and Coker Triplett along that way this fellow can really powder that baseball here's the first pitch and it's right over the outside corner knee high for a call strike Chandler has his control out there today and he is a masterful pitcher 20 wins and 4 defeats an earned run average of only a run and a half a game over the entire season. A fellow with a brilliant change of pace and everything in his pitching assortment. Man on second and two gone. One strike on the batter. There's that fastball. It just missed getting the corner knee high, and the batter stepped back, taking ball one and strike one. So it's one and one on Danny Litwater. He has a chance to drive in the first run of the ball game if he can come through here in the first half of the second inning. The Yankees talk it up around the infield. Johnson at third, Presetti at short, Gordon at second, Etten at first. The outfield is Lindell in center, Stain back in right field, and Keller in left field. Here comes the next pitch, and it's a ball, low outside. The ball breaking away from a right-hand hitter, almost into the dirt. Bill Dickey, one of the great catchers, one of the great ball players, and one of the great fellas of all time, really a ball player's ball player, steps out in front of the plate and throws that ball back to Chandler. Ball two and strike one for Litwaller. Man on second, here's the pitch. It's low and outside again. He's keeping that ball away from Litwaller. Litwater can really pull that ball into left field, and Chandler is working very cautiously on him, very carefully, and he has worked the count now to ball three and strike one. The next man to come up will be Marion. And on second base for St. Louis. It's the first half of the second inning. A capacity crowd at New York. First game of the 43 World Series, which is being sent by Mutual and Gillette around the world. Chandler getting all set out there again, arms up over his head. Here comes the next pitch, and it's a ball. He walked. Ball four, way outside. I wouldn't say that it was a deliberate ball four pitch, Red, but it was the closest thing to it, wouldn't you say? He whipped that ball plenty far outside, and that is the first walk of the ball game. Here is Martin Marion. Fans, I don't think that anyone would be saying that they were partisan, or no one could be accused of being partisan. If he said, right out bluntly, this fellow is one of the great ball players of baseball. He really is. He can play wonderful shortstop. And he's hitting 279. Here's the first pitch to him, and there's a foul. It's out of play. It's in the stands off to the right. Man on first, a man on second for St. Louis. Cooper got a hit to start the inning. A high bouncer off of Johnson's glove. Moved to second on a sacrifice. Saunders struck out. Litwater just drew a walk. Man on first, man on second. Two gone. This is the first scoring opportunity of the ball game. He's getting ready again. Here's the next pitch. Merriam swings. There's a line drive. It's a fair ball. Down the first baseline, the first one is scoring. Here's another man rounding third base. Here's the throw into the plate, and he is out at the plate. A run has scored, but Litwater, attempting to score, was out at the plate on the throw from Gordon, who ran down the foul line to pick up that ball. What happened, it was a liner down the first baseline, very close to the foul line, and Etten touched the ball in fair territory and deflected it into foul territory. It went down the line, down the right field line, one run scored. Cooper scored easily on the play. But Danny Litwater, attempting to come all the way around, was out at the plate. And it is scored as a two-base hit. So the total's on the inning. 
are one run, two hits, there was a walk in the inning, and the Cardinals have drawn first blood. The score one to nothing at the end of the first half of the second. You know, only a few minutes ago, I found out something about the Yanks that gives me a big bang, and friends, you'll understand why. Just listen to this. Player after player in today's lineup, Rossetti, Johnson, Chandler, just to name a few, uses the Gillette Blue Blade. Now, fans, when it comes to picking razor blades, I claim that many New York Yankees can't be wrong. You see, today's Gillette Blue Blade is the sharpest, slickest shaving blade that ever breathes through tough whiskers. More than that, it's the longest lasting, too, bar none. Man, what shaves this blade gives you. Smooth, clean, refreshing shaves. The kind that preps you up and makes you look right on the button. Well, fans, we're going into the last half of the second inning of this first game of the World Series. Let me recapitulate that last play for you just a bit. There was a man on first, a man on second with two out. When Marion slammed a line drive right down the foul line, Etten leaped into the air, touched the ball in fair territory, and deflected it. It rose slowly out along the right field line. Gordon and Stainback chased the ball. A run scored. Gordon picked the ball up and fired it into the plate. And Lipwater, also attempting to come all the way around, was out by 10 feet at home plate. The play at the plate was not close. And one run scored. We're now going into the last half of the second, and the first man to bat is Charlie Keller, the real bell ringer with the Yankees, one of the great hitters of World Series play. He takes a ball low and outside and takes a fastball outside for ball two. This fellow Keller can really hit this baseball. He has had an outstanding World Series record. He's hit five home runs in World Series play. Here's the pitch, and there's a foul. It's out of play. It's up into the stands off here to the left, and it is a count of ball two and strike one. It's a two-and-one count on Charlie Keller, the first man to bat in the last half of the second. Charlie Keller up in there, crowding that plate. Max Lanier, a left-hander on the mound. The Cardinals lead one to nothing. Last half of the second on Marion's hit. Here's the pitch. There's a fastball. It's high and outside. It's ball three. Charlie Keller just standing up there. He's going to make him pitch. Lanier taking his time, getting his sign from Walker Cooper. So far, there's been only one walk in the ball game. It was drawn by Litwaller. Charlie Keller batting. Nobody on and nobody out. He gets all set again. Here it is. There's a fast ball right in around his knee to call strike, and Keller didn't like it. Keller turns around to argue with the umpire. It was a low fast ball right in around his knees. This pitcher, Lanier, can really keep that fast one in there low. And it sinks and came in right around his knees, and it's a ball three, strike two count. This is a very important pitch here to Keller. Nobody on and nobody out. The Yankees failed by a run in the first game of the World Series. Here comes the pitch. There is a long fly ball down the right field line. It looks foul, fans. It is foul. The count is ball three and strike two. A long drive down the right field line. A typical Yankee smash, and it was a foul ball. Can you hear that yelling from the crowd? Chandler comes back to the plate, or, Chandler, or Keller comes back to the plate and picks up that bat, stands around down there, and Lanier stands out on the mound and fidgets around with his cap. The outfield of the Cardinals is playing him way around to the right. He's a notorious and very dangerous pull hitter. He can really give that ball a ride. Keller batting, nobody on and nobody out. Three, two count on the batter. Here's the pitch. He struck him out. He took a perfect strike right over the plate. That was a beautiful, sharp curve. Lanier gambled that time. He had plenty of speed on that curve ball, and he whipped it right through, right through the middle, and there's one gone. Now here's the great Joe Gordon of the Yankees. This fellow didn't have such a good World Series record last year. But don't make any mistake, he's one of baseball's greats. Batting 247, a fellow who can break up a ball game anytime. The first pitch is wide for a ball. One out and nobody on. Last half of the second. First game of the World Series at New York. Cardinals won. The Yankees nothing. Here comes the next pitch. There's a swing and a bouncing ball to the right of Lanier. Makes a nice pick up. The peg feeds out in a close play at first base. The play going from Lanier to Saunders. And the Cardinals pepper that ball around. This fellow Lanier is a good fielding pitcher. He raced over near the foul line. Grabbed that ball with his gloved hand. Spun entirely around. Fired that ball to first base. And he got Gordon who was racing for that bag by a step. Two out. Here's the great catcher of the Yankees, Bill Dickey, the only man on the team hitting over 300. Bill's made a wonderful comeback this year, and every baseball player and every baseball fan is glad to see it. His average for the year is 351. 
Batting against left-hander Lanier with two out and nobody on in the last half of the second. There is a fastball that's in close around the knees, and it's ball one. Around the infield for the Cardinals, we have Karoski at third. Martin Marion is in there at short. Klein is at second. At first base is Sanders. Lanier getting all ready again. Here's the next pitch. Dickey takes a fastball high and outside, and it's ball two. The outfield for St. Louis is Mitwater in left field. Muzio is playing in right field, and Harry Walker is playing center field. The battery, Lanier pitching, and Walker Cooper doing the catching. Artie Fletcher coaching at third. Down here to our left, Earl Combs over to first. The Yankee dugout is to the left of our mutual broadcasting booth, and the Redbirds of St. Louis have the one down here to the right, and practically all of them are standing up in the dugout watching play. All those that are not on the field. Gets all ready again. Here's the next pitch. There's a swing and a bouncing ball to Karaski. Goes to his left, picks it up the peg. He's an easy out, and it retires the side. Play going from Karaski, third to first, and it is three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, nothing across, fans. And at the end of two innings, the totals, the St. Louis Cardinals, one run and two hits. The New York Yankees, no runs and no hits. The pitchers, Lanier and Chandler. And this is just what it promised out to be, a real pitcher's ball game. A great first game of what should be one of the great World Series that we've had in the last 20 years. Both these teams are determined this year. As I said before, with the Yankees, it is not a challenge, it's a crusade. And with the St. Louis Cardinals, they want to show National League fans around the country that the Cardinal win over the... Uh, Yankees last year was not a fluke. It was not a mistake. It was just the fact that after the Yankees' great World Series record of so many years that a lot of American leaguers attributed last year's win to, well, just one of those things. So Billy Southworth and his crew want to show them that they can do it again. So that's what we have. Two great ball teams. Two determined, outstanding, fine managers in what should be one of the most colorful World Series of all time. Now, fans, we're going into the first half of the third inning of this ball game. It's a beautiful sight up here in our mutual booth as we look out onto the field. The Yankees out there in their white uniforms, pegging that ball around, the outfield getting all set. Here's the umpire at the plate, Ed Rommel, cleaning off home plate. And here's the first man to bat, Lanier, stepping into the batter's box. A chunky fellow, number 21 in red on the back of his gray uniform. We're starting the third inning with the score. The Cardinals won, the Yankees nothing, and Spud Chandler is getting a sign. Here's the pitch, and it is a nice strike right in there around his knees, and it's called. Manager Billy Southworth is coaching at third, and Mike Gonzalez is coaching at first. Here comes the next pitch to Lanier, and Lanier swings the bouncing ball to Gordon's left. He's up with it. There goes the peg. He's out. The play going from Gordon to Etten, and the Yankees peg the ball around. The play was not close. One out. Well, we're back to the top of the St. Louis batting order again, fans. Klein, who flied out to center field the first time up. A little fellow who is a great little ball player is coming up to the plate. Number two on the back of his gray uniform. There's one out and nobody on. Yankees talk it up out there in the infield. Now Chandler's getting ready. Here's the pitch, and there's a very wide pitch that he couldn't have hit with a broom. It was way outside, and it's ball one. Yankee outfield playing this hitter straight away. They're not a bit to the left or a bit more to the right. Chandler gets all ready again. Here comes the pitch. There's a smash on the ground to Gordon right at him. There goes the peg. He's an easy out. The play going from Gordon to Etten, and now Dickey pegs that ball around the Yankee infield. That's two gone. Now the next man to come up is going to be the center fielder, Walker. In his last start, which Chandler won, 2-1 to one in 14 innings, just to show you the shape this fellow is in, he retired 15 out of the last 16 men to face him in order. Truly one of baseball's great pitchers. Here's Walker up, a left-hand battery, applied to stain back the first time, strike right down the middle, it's called. Walker steps out of the batter's box now to get a little dirt on his hands. Now he has his cap off. Right down below us. Here he is, right down below us. Yankee infield talks it up. Johnson playing in close at third. Chandler getting all ready again. Here it is. There's a swing, a fly ball. Fairly deep to right field, but it should be caught. Stained back is under it. And he grabs the ball to retire the side. And so it is three up and three down in the first half of the third inning. Nothing across. No runs and no hits. And that is that ends the first half of the third inning. Listen, you retired officers, mates, engineers, able-bodied seamen, and men who can cook or bake, you men who have ever had experience working on any ship in any part of the world. The United States Merchant Marine is performing the biggest transportation job in world history. Every day, five new ships are launched, sailing in convoys under the protection of the Navy and Air Force. They're delivering vitally needed supplies to our fighting men on all fronts. You men are needed for the Merchant Marine. The pay is excellent. 
Able seamen make from $200 to $300 a month. Engineers get from $250 to $850, practically all velvet. Food, room, medical, and dental attention are free. You sleep on modern steel spring bunks, eat fresh meat, fresh vegetables, bread and pies prepared by skilled cooks. You're a hero without uniform, performing a job on which the fate of this country depends. Do something today you'll be proud of. Send a collect telegram to Merchant Marine, Washington, D.C. Just give your name, address, and rating. Or if you can't send a telegram, mail a postcard to the Merchant Marine, Washington, D.C. Uncle Sam will send you complete information. Now we'll pause for station identification, the broadcast of the first game of the World Series. This is Mutual. This is WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago. Now this is Bob Elson greeting you again from Yankee Stadium in New York, the first man to bat for the Yanks. In the third is Nick Eppin, the left-hand hitter, and he took the first pitch wide for a ball. There's a ground ball down to Martin Marion. Comes in, picks the ball up, there goes the peg, and it was wide, but the first baseman grabbed the ball with one hand and kept his foot on the bag to get the nod from the umpire. Marion's throw almost pulled him off the bag, but they got him at first. Eppin is out. One gone. Here's Johnny Lindell, who was with the Yankees last year in the role of a pitcher. This big fella has really shown remarkable ability as a ball hawk in the outfield. He's a fine hitter, and he's playing in center field today. Big right-hand batter, batting 245 for the season. There's a swing and a foul. It slides off his bat and rolls on the ground off to the left, and it's one strike on big Johnny Lindell. This fellow is a giant. He's well over six feet tall, and when he gets a hold of that ball, he can really give it a ride. One out and nobody on. Last half of the third inning. Score one to nothing. Cardinals. Here comes the pitch. There is a smash foul into the stands. Back of first base. And it's two strikes on Lindell. Max Lanier with a record of 15 wins and seven defeats. A beautiful curve ball. A swell change of pace. And a nifty fast one is on the mound for the Redbirds. Against one of baseball's outstanding pitchers, Spurgeon Chandler. Karoski at third. Marion at short. Klein at second. Sanders at first. Litwater in left field, Walker in center field, Musio in right field. We'll repeat these lineups occasionally during the ball game for those of you who are tuning into the broadcast late. Wherever you happen to be listening, down there in the Texas Panhandle or up in Oregon or up in Maine, wherever you happen to be. Here's the next pitch. There is a swing and a miss. The catcher dropped the ball, picks it up and throws to first, and Lindell is out. He swung at a low curve ball. The catcher dropped the ball and had to throw him out at first, and there's two gone. Now here is Spud Chandler coming up to the plate. Chandler gets a nice hand, and well, he should. With his marvelous record for New York this year of 20 wins against only four losses. That's right-handed, and incidentally is also a good hitting pitcher. Here comes the first pitch to him. He hits a drive into left field. It's a base hit. First hit for the Yankees. A line drive over Marion's head. Lipwater played the ball on the first bounce and fired it into second base. I no sooner got the words out of my mouth that he was a good hitter than bango, he cracked a line drive for the first Yankee hit. So there is hit number one off of Lanier. It brings up Stainback, who is playing in right field for the Yankees and leading off. And on first base and two gone here in the last half of the third. Cardinals lead in the first game of the World Series, one to nothing. The outfield playing Stainback, not too deep. Lanier getting set, here's the first pitch. It's a spike, it's called. It's right in around his knee. Center fielder, Walker for St. Louis, is playing staying back right in line with the pitcher's box in second base. Straight away. And on first base and two gone, here's the next pitch. It's fast and low, almost in the dirt. Walker Cooper straightens out, fires that ball back to Chunky Max Lanier, a left-hander on the mound for the Cardinals. And on first, one hit for the Yankees, two hits for St. Louis. Lanier gets set out there again. Here's the next pitch. It's a swing and a miss. A very sharp curve across the letters that Stainback went for and couldn't connect with. And it is a ball one strike two count on Tucker. Tucker's been in the National League and in the American League. This lad has really been around. He's always been a great defensive outfielder. Never really outstanding with the bat. Although this year hitting just against left-hand pitching, uh, he has done pretty well with an average of close to 270. Here's the pitch. He took a swing at an outside pitch and fouled it on the ground off to the left, and it's ball one, strike two for Stainback. Those of you who happen to be tuning in to the broadcast late, the Cardinals scored their run in the second inning. Cooper leading off with a hit, advancing to second on a sacrifice, stayed at second while Saunders struck out, Lipwater walked, and Marion doubled down the right field line. That's how the run scored. The score is one to nothing in the last half of the third. 
And on first stop for the Yankees, they've just made their first hit. Here's the pitch to Stainback. He stuck him out. A very sharp curve around the letters. And Stainback is out on strike. So that is strikeout number three for Max Lanier. It leaves a man on first base. Stainback went down swinging. And it is no runs and one hit. And fans the totals at the end of three innings of play in the first game of the 1943 World Series. The Cardinals, one run, two hits. The New York Yankees, no runs and one hit. You know, the Yankees skimmed the cream off the money pot in nine of their 14 postseason bids. Between 1927 and 1941 inclusive, they took eight titles, grinding up six different National League clubs. The Cubs and the Giants going back for a second dose. They swept five of these series in four straight. In two, they lost only one game. Don't underestimate the Yankees, regardless of what happens in this first game of the 1943 World Series. The Cardinals have the best World Series record of any National League club, playing in more than one series. Four victories out of six, and two out of three over the famous Yankees. Now, fans, the first game of the World Series with the score one to nothing Cardinals is going into the first half of the fourth. And the first man to bat is baseball's leading hitter, Stan Musial, the right fielder of the Cardinals, who flied out the first time up. He flied out to the center fielder, Lindell. Stands far back from the plate. Here's the first pitch from Spud, and it's high and outside for a ball. Southworth, great manager of the Cardinals, number 30 on the back of his uniform, coaches at third, while the great manager of the Yankees does all of his masterminding from the dugout. Here's the pitch, and there's a bouncing ball straight at Gordon. He's up with it. There goes the peg. He is an easy out. The play was not close. Gordon to it. Now here's Walker Cooper, one of the famous Cooper brothers. Martin Cooper, the outstanding right-hander for the Cardinals who won over 20 ball games, and who a lot of people thought that Southworth would gamble on in this first game. He's had a little trouble with his arm, however, and Lanier was the starting pitcher. Here's the first pitch to Cooper, and it is a ball low and outside. Cooper, by the way, has one of the two Cardinal hits so far in the ball game. It's a real pitcher's battle and a real battle between two great teams. Here comes the pitch. It's a high bouncing ball to the left of the shortstop. He's up with the ball. There goes the peg. He's out. The play going from Crescetti to Etten, and it was not close. He was out by 10 feet. So there's two gone, and the Yankees pepper that ball around the infield. Now here's Whitey Karowski, third baseman of the, of the Cardinals. He was up. He sacrificed the first time up a bunch of the pitchers. Starting now with two out and nobody on. Here's the first pitch from Spud, and it's a strike letter high. Right in over the plate and up around the letters, and Karaski watched it go by. Rommel of the American League is the umpire back of the plate. Beans Ridden of the National at first, Joe Rue of the American at second, and Stain and uh, Stewart, Bill Stewart of the National League is working at third. Karaski waits, here's the pitch, and there is a smash on the ground right through the box. Gordon gets it, there goes the peg, he's out. At first base, the play going from Gordon to Etten, and it retires the side. Fans, that ball was hit very hard, but the second baseman was playing him over near the bag, so it was not a hard play to make. It's a case of three up and three down, nothing across in the first half of the fourth. Red, do you have a message? Yeah, Bob, you know, um, that quick play by Tuck Stainback that threw to Bill Dickey, which retired the Cardinals in the scoring half of the second inning, is one of the outstanding highlights of the game so far. Anyhow, it gets my vote. Just as shaving the all Gillette way gets tucks. Steinbeck says that he never realized how thoroughly comfortable shaving could be until he learned to prepare his beard with Gillette Lather Shaving Cream and ease it off with the Gillette Blue Blade. Friends, I'm sure you'll say much the same when you try shaving this quicker, more refreshing way. Gillette Shaving Cream is an amazing beard softener. It holds an uncommon amount of water and keeps your whiskers saturated. Do yourself a good turn. Shave the all Gillette way and see how much better you look and feel. Ask your dealer for Gillette Lather Shaving Cream. That's it, Bob. All right, Red, fine. Now we're going into the last half of the fourth inning, fans, of this World Series game. Boy, this place is really seething with excitement. Here's Corsetti up. The score is one to nothing. Max Lanier getting his sign. Here's the pitch. It's fast and true right through the middle for a call strike. One strike on Frankie Corsetti, the nimble little shortstop of the New York Yankees. Playing regularly this year in the absence of Phil Rizzuto. Gets all ready again. Here's the next pitch. There is one that's a little bit low and inside. 
A man working most of the time with an overarm delivery can really powder that fastball in there. And he puts practically as much speed on his curveball as he does on his fastball. It's a ball one strike, one count on Frankie Corsetti. Here's the pitch, and there's a swing and a foul. It's out of play. It's in the stands to the right, and it's ball one and strike two on the batter. Left-hander on the mound for the Cardinals. As I told you before, the Yankees fared better against left-hand pitching this year than they did against right-hand pitching. Three right-handers pitched one-hit games against them. Orville Grove, Ross, and Sundrup. While the best left-handed performance, one of the best turned in against them, was turned in by Newhauser of Detroit here in the stadium when he struck out 14 men. The ball one strike two count on Corsetti. Here is a slow ball, and there is a ball hit sharply to the left of the second baseman. Here's the throw to the first base. He's safe at first. Lanier covered first base and took the throw from Klein, and it is safe at first. And let's see how the official scorer is going to score the play. Lanier lobbed up a big balloon ball that time today for the first throw slow ball he has thrown and sharp little Frankie Corsetti promptly cracked that ball between first and second the second baseman Klein was lucky to get the ball at all he threw the ball to first base where the pitcher raced over to cover they arrived at practically the same time and I believe it will be scored as a base hit no the official scorer decides that Lanier should have held it so Red while you're marking your scorecard and I'll do the same mark that as an error it is the first error in the ball game it's an error for Lanier. Klein's throw, the official score decides, was good enough, even though it was a little bit high, that he should have held it. So Corsetti is on first base with an error. There's the tying run on first base, and now here's Bill Johnson up. He was the strikeout victim the first time up. That was a hard play to make at first. Here's the pitch. There's the runner going down. There goes the throw. It's very high. Goes to the center field, and it is safe at second base. Walker Cooper made a bad throw to second base as Corsetti went down for the first stolen base of the series, and the only thing that saved Walker Cooper an error and that would give the runner an additional base was the fact that the center fielder came racing in to back the play up, and Corsetti, who had slid in, could not get up in time to get to third. It's a steal, the first steal of the series. Corsetti on second base now with the tying run fans. It was a ball one count. Walker Cooper trying to cut down the first theft of the 1943 World Series just threw the ball into center field. Man on second. Ball one count on Johnson. Nobody out. Last half of the fourth. And they're getting ready. Here's the pitch. A bump down the first baseline. First baseman picks the ball up. Tries to get in. He misses him. And it's safe at first. It'll be scored as a hit. A man on first. A man on third for the Yankees. It was a beautiful bump down the first baseline. It was bunted rather hard and it went almost down to the bag. It was picked up by the first baseman Sanders about eight feet from first base and about one foot inside the line fair. He grabbed the ball, reached for the runner at the same time. He did not touch him and there's a man on first and a man on third in this fourth inning of the World Series and fans the Yankee tying runners on third base with nobody out. Base hit. Man on first, man on third and Charlie Keller up. He was a strikeout victim the first time up, and Chucky Max Lanier, who is really a desperado out there on the mound when he's cornered, in other words, he has the heart of a lion out there. This fella, nothing bothers him. He is really on a spot today. Man on first, a man on third, and color up ball. It's low and outside, and it's ball one. On that roller down the first baseline, it was just that type of a ground ball that neither one of them could decide who was to make the play. The pitcher didn't know whether to try to get it. The first baseman didn't know whether to come off the bag or not. He finally did, and when he tried to reach him, it was too late. There is a tremendous swing by Keller and a miss. And they're bearing down for all he is worth to try to prevent this tying run from coming in here in the last half of the fourth inning. The Redbirds of St. Louis, the defending champions, lead one to nothing in this World Series game at New York. Man on first, a man on third, and St. Louis has two pitchers working now in the bullpen. Man on first, a man on third. Here's the pitch, and Keller cracks the ground ball to the second baseman. Over the second, out, back over the first, out, and it's a double play. The tying run scored. It was a beautiful double play that time, fans. I did not think they'd get the man at first, but they did. It was a ball hit very sharply to the right of the second baseman, Klein, who raced over to the right, picked that ball up, flipped it to Martin Marion, one of the great pivot men in baseball. He fired that ball to first base in time to double Charlie Keller, and it's a double play. It's one and one now. It's anybody's ball game here in the first game of the World Series, and boy, what a ball game this is. So the run has scored. 
Keller hit into a double play. Second is short to first, and here is Joe Gordon up. The first pitch to Joe is high and wide, and it's ball one. First game of the World Series is all tied up at one and one. The Cardinals scored in the second, and the Yankees have scored in the fourth. Here gets ready again. Here's the next pitch. Gordon takes one low inside, a curveball, breaking in sharply and low to a right-hand hitter, and it's ball two. Each side has now made two hits. Each side has made one run. Lanier gets ready. Here's the pitch. There is a foul. It's out of play. It's back into the screen. Ball hit foul by Gordon, batting with two out and nobody on, and the tying run has scored. Max Lanier, a chunky left-hander working for St. Louis, and Spurgeon Chandler working for the Yankees. Boy, this is some ball game. Gets already out there again. Here's the next pitch. Fast and high. It's the ball. Ball three and strike one. He doesn't want the ball. And umpire Rommel gives him a new one. Well, we certainly wish Red and I do. And Bill, that you could be here with us, fans, wherever you happen to be listening to this ball game today, which is being sent around the world by Gillette. We hope that we can make it just as good a picture for you as we possibly can, because believe me, it's a most exciting game. Ball three and strike one. Here's the next pitch, and Gordon slams the long one. Way back in the left field. It may be. It's way back. It's a home run. Well, fans, Joe Gordon just greeted that 3-1 pitch like a country cousin. Brother, did he give it a ride? It went over the sign, marked 402 feet from home plate, and the Yankees are in the lead by a score of 2-1 to one on Gordon's home run smash, and was that a wallop? Joe Gordon just homered over the 402-foot sign in the lower stands in left field. Now here's Bill Dickey up, score 2-1, two, two out. There's a spike, it's a slow curve, and it's right in around his knee. Score 2-1, to one. last half of the fourth inning. Chandler getting all ready out there again. Here comes the next pitch, and Dickey takes a high one that time for the ball. Ball one and strike one. Well, this has been quite an inning. This last half of the fourth inning has been quite an inning. We've seen the picture change entirely from a one to nothing Cardinal lead to a two to one Yankee lead. Gets all ready again. Here's the next one. It's wide a curve ball. Ball two and strike one. And again, we see moved into the picture. Early in the first game of the World Series, that old Yankee power again, home run. By the way, that is Gordon's third World Series homer. Here gets all set again. Here's the next pitch. Dickey swings. It's a fly ball in the infield that Martin Marion should have no trouble with at all. He's back under it and has it to retire the side. So, fans, that most exciting inning is over here at New York with the Yankees getting two runs on one hit and an error, and the score at the end of four innings of play, the Yankees two, the Cardinals one. Friends, the men and women of Gillette are very proud of the Army Navy E recently awarded for their outstanding war production work, and they are out to break the record that won them this coveted citation. You know, talking about the Yankee effectiveness against left-hand pitching, I told you that it's really a bugaboo because they've done better this year against left-handers than right-handers. There is one, however, important note. That is, the Yankees hit 100 homers this year, and they hit only 16 of those homers against left-hand pitching. Now, that might be one notable spot in which they did not do as good against southpaws as they did against the other variety. They hit 100 homers, and only 16 of those homers were made against left-hand pitching. Well, we're going into the first half of the fifth inning. World Series. Score 2-1 to one, Yankees. Still anybody's ball game. Chandler out there on the mound, getting in his practice throws. And the first man to bat for the Cardinals is going to be the first baseman, Sanders, who is now coming up to the plate. Billy Southworth was just talking with him. And now there goes Bill walking down the third baseline toward the coaching box at third. Grissetti was safe on an air. Johnson beat out an infield hit. In that last half of the fourth, and the run scored while Keller was hitting into a double play. That made two out, and then Gordon smashed the long homer, the first homer of the series, into the left field stands, 402 feet away, and the score, two to one Yankees. Now here's Sanders up. 
He was a strikeout victim the first time up, and there is a beautiful pitch. Slow, a curve, over the outside corner, knee high, and it's a call strike. Nobody on and nobody out. First half of the fifth. The Yankees lead 2-1. to one. Chandler gets ready. Here's the next pitch. Saunders cracks a ground ball to the right of Gordon. A backhand stab. There goes the peg. B is safe. He beat it out, but what a miraculous play. What a play by Gordon, who went back to second base and made a backhand stab with that ball. And now... As the Yankees throw the ball back to the pitcher, the ball gets away, and Sanders goes to second on the air. What a play that was. It was a ground ball hit sharply through the box, and it looked like it was going right into center field. It looked like the ball was a sure hit. Gordon made a miraculous backhand, gloved hand stab of the ball, straightened up and fired it, and he just beat the play to first base by a fraction of a step. Just a fraction of a step. The umpire, Beans Reardon of the National League, was right down over the bag to watch that play. And it is safe at first and a base hit. On that throw, which got away there in the Yankee infield, Etten is charged with an error. And on second base, it's the tying run. Here's a break for the Cardinals, a base hit, and then an error that got away in the infield. And Sanders, alert, on his toes, scored for second base with his man in a scoring position. And here is Danny Litwater up. He walked the first time up. And on second base, Chandler ready. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a miss. Ball right in around the letters, and he swung hard and missed it by a foot. Chandler bearing down, really giving the Cardinals a look at a great assortment out there on the mound today. Fast balls, curves, screw balls, change of pace, everything. Man on second is staying close to the bag. There's a fastball, and there's a fly ball hit into right center field. Watch the man on second. He might advance. The ball is deep. It's caught. And here is the runner racing for third. The throw is cut off by the shortstop on the way to third, and it's safe at third. It was a long fly ball hit into right center field by Litwater. The throw to third base was cut off by Gordon, who ran over back of the shortstop's position. And the tying run is now on third for the Redbirds with one out. Here's Martin Marion who had a very telling hit the first time up. He slammed a line drive double down the first baseline that was too hot for our good friend Nick Etten to handle. Nick had to leap for the ball. It just brushed his glove, rolled into foul territory, and that drove in the first run. Now here's Marion in the key spot again. A two-to-one ball game, favor of the Yankees at New York, and the Cardinals have a man on third. Here is the pitch, and there is a ball, low and outside, and it's ball one. Naturally, the Yankee infield is drawn in close. The all-important thing here is keep that man on third. Cut off the possible tying run. The outfield playing Marion straight away. This fellow is the type of hitter who's apt to hit at any place. Here comes the pitch, and it's very wide. It looks very much as though Chandler might be willing to risk losing this man rather than let him hit it a good ball. Man on third and one out in the first half of the fifth inning at New York. A capacity crowd watching a great ball game just what it promised to be. We hope that you're enjoying every play wherever you happen to be listening to this World Series broadcast. He gets ready again. Here it is. It's a ball. The third time that he missed the plate and Chandler is too good a pitcher to miss the plate by that margin three straight times. He is definitely willing to lose this man rather than let him hit it. Hope that they can get the next man to come up in the air to hit into a double play. Let's watch this one. No, that time he came through with a beautiful strike. Right through with it. Right down the middle. Right above his knees. And it's a ball three, strike one count. A man on third for St. Louis. One out. The score, two to one, the Yankees. First half of the fifth. Chandler gets all ready again. Here it comes. And it is a foul. It's out of play. It's in the stands. Down the first baseline. And now Chandler has worked up a count. A ball three and strike two on Martin Marion. Paul Slats Marion, number four in red on the back of his gray uniform, has a chance here to come through twice already in the first game of the World Series. He did it the first time with a double. He drove in a run. And now the Redbirds are trailing by a run, and there's a teammate perched on third base. That teammate is Sanders, who had a hit, advanced to second on an error, and went to third on a fly ball to deep right center field. Here comes the pitch. It's a swing and a bouncing ball in the infield. Gordon has it, holds the runner, throws the batter out. Two gone. A bouncing ball in the infield to Gordon. Came in on the ball, picked it up, took one look at third, drove Sanders back, and then fired the ball to first base to retire Marion. So fans... There's two gone now. That runner is still on third. Well, here is Max Lanier coming up to the plate. 
Stepping around to the left side. He bounced out the first time up. He has a chance to tie up, tie up his own ball game here if he can get a hit. Spud Chandler's ready. Here's the pitch, and there's a swing, and a rather feeble swing it was of a sharp curve, waist high, and it's one strike on Max Lanier. Cardinals scored their run in the second. The Yankees scored their run in the fourth. The score is 2-1. to one. Cardinals have a man on third. Here comes the next pitch. There's a swing and a miss. And it is two strikes. And it looks very much as though Spurgeon Chandler is measuring Mr. Lanier here for a strikeout victim. He's fooled him completely on two pitches. Man on third. Two strikes on the batter. Two out. That's a very important run to St. Louis. We're in the first half of the fifth inning. Chandler gets all ready again. Here comes the next pitch. And there goes a blooper out in the left center field. It's a hit. The game is tied up. And I think that that one incident alone can exemplify why baseball is our national pastime. Here is a World Series game that millions are listening to and that thousands are watching in New York. Here is a man practically measured for that next pitch. He looks bad on two. The tying run is on third. He's got the pitcher who is batting just where he wants him. And bingo, there goes a base hit out into left center field. This is anybody's ball game. It's all tied up. Here's Klein up. There's a swing and a bouncing ball at Johnson at third. The play is to second. It's a forced play. It retires the side. And Max Lanier is forced coming into second base. But that great little pitcher came through in the clutch with a base hit. And he tied up this ball game. And what a ball game it is, and what a great ball game it should be for the last half for Red Barber to tell you about. Now let me check my totals on that inning again. One run and two hits. The hits in the inning were by Sanders and by Lanier, who came through in the clutch with a telling hit. And the ball game at the end of the first half of the fifth inning is all tied up. My figures show two runs and four hits for St. Louis, and... Two runs and two hits for the Yankees. The Yankees, of course, have had one last turn, a less turn than the others. Uh, two runs and three hits, and they are coming to bat now in the last half of the fifth inning for this great World Series game. Four is tied at two and two, and the run in that inning, of course, was unearned because of the air that moved the man around. Well, fans, this is Bob Elson getting away from the microphone now and turning it over, our mutual mic, to my good friend and pal, Red Barber, who I've worked with for so many years, and it's a great privilege, and I enjoy being here with him once again. I know that he's going to give you a wonderful story of the last half of this exciting ball game, as only he can. Come in, Red. I know the fans will enjoy your story of what should be a most exciting last half of a ball game. Thank you, Bob, very, very much. Believe me, folks, it's a great ball game. Two great pitches going two great teams meeting, and believe me also, the Gillette Blue Blade really has what it takes to make shaving quick and refreshing. All even, as we move into the last half of the fifth inning, Big Nick Etten, a left-hand hitter, crouches, crowding the plate from behind, a wide-open stance. Max Ania pumps, bends at the knees, the left-handed pitches, fastball low for ball one. All tied at two and two. Two runs, four hits, and one error. St. Louis, two runs, three hits, one error for New York. First game of the 1943 World Series. Outfield deep, round toward right on Etten. Swings and tips it foul, right back into catch a walk of Cooper's mitt. One and one. Max is stocky. Blue-eyed, and those eyes peer out at you from behind overhanging bony eyebrows. He's a tough competitor. Bends, comes down, there's a curve swung on and foul back. One ball, two strikes. Lanier has everything that a pitcher needs in his assortment. A fastball, a curve, a let-up pitch or a change of pace. And he has, in addition, a knuckleball, which he throws very hard. It's hard to see it unless you're looking for it. He's developed it this year. Works. Fastball low inside, down across the shins. It's two and two. Etten's stance is so open that his heels are together. In other words, if you drew a line between his ankles, it'd go from dugout to dugout. It is the most open stance of any major league hitter today. Crouches, he's a big fella. Swings, hits a ground ball halfway to second base, and Klein juggles it, loses it, and Etten is safely on. The ball took a trick bounce, perhaps. At any rate, Klein, as he was all set to throw, suddenly could not come up with it, and it is an error, of course. Ball hit right at the second baseman, and Etten is on. This is the second error for St. Louis. It's the third error of the ball game. 
Here now is Johnny Lindell, who last year this time was sitting in the Yankee dugout as a pitcher who wasn't good enough to pitch. This year, he's played all three outfields, finally settled down in center. Six feet four inches, right-hand batter. Lanier throws to first, not in time, up and back. This fellow has a very good move over to first base. Baseball, we call it the balk move. It's hard to tell when he's going to throw to the plate or throw to the base. The pitch, there's a bunt down toward first and across the line foul. Sacrifice was on, fouled off, and it's a strike. Nobody out. The Yankees are not hesitating in this tough ball game against this left-hander to go after one run. All tied at two and two. And Dell goes to the Yankee batter's rosin bag. During the Yankee batting practice, Joe Gordon, as Lindell stepped in the batter's box, began singing a little song. It was a variation on the popular number of uh, Johnny Got a Zero. Gordon was singing, I hope Johnny doesn't get a zero, meaning Lindell, and I hope he didn't go, say, 0 for 3 or 0 for 4. As a fast call strike up by the hands, strike two. Lindell, I think, is a prime example as to the great moves that McCarthy's made this year in rebuilding the Yankee ball club. Took a fellow who was a pitcher last year, made him a set of fielder, opening game of the World Series this. Getting off first, nobody out. Lindell swings and misses, and is struck out. Curveball sharply biting in under the hands. Left hander coming right into a right hand hitter. And this for Lanier is his fifth strikeout, which is eloquent testimony as to the stuff that he has this afternoon in working four and a third innings. And there's a great round of applause that is sweeping all through the stadium as Fred Chandler steps in. Chandler, who with two men out in the third inning, singles sharply to left field, the first Yankee base hit. Lanier checks the runner. Now pitches, Chandler takes a strike. That one came in over the outside, just above the knees. Max keeps his stuff pretty low. I feel a couple of steps around toward the left on Chandler. Play this fellow to pull. Pitch, swung on and missed. Fastball, strike two. It isn't often that a man reaches the peak in two major sports. Chandler has done so. In his college days, he was a great football player. Halfback of Georgia. Now, of course, he's riding the crest of the pitching wave. Best record, earned run, neither major league, almost 20 years. Pitches low inside, four ball one. One ball, two strikes. Odd Fletcher, coaching at third for the Yankees. Earl Combs, coaching at first. Sanders at first base holds the bag tightly against Stanton, the runner. Two to tie, one man out. Vanilla comes down in position, checks the runner, delivers. There's a swing and miss for strike three. And right after this error at second base, all Lanier has done has been strike out the next two and run his keys in the scoring book. That's the symbol that most everyone uses to indicate a batter struck out to six. The outfield remains around toward left. There's Tuck Stain back, but one time and shifting around through the majors, played with the Cardinals, whom he's opposing at the moment. Right-hand hitter, nobody close stance. Swings and hits it down foul. Ball trickles over and dies halfway to the Cardinal dugout. Cardinal dugout is on the first base side. The Yankees, as always, use the dugout on the third base side here at the stadium. New ball put in play by plate umpire Eddie Rommel. Former American League pitcher. Vanier takes the sign from Walker Cooper, who is staying low on his crouch. Tender ready. Looks it first. Throws it out of the plate. There's a high fly ball that is banged into left center. Litwaller going over. Harry Walker going over. And it's left field to Litwaller for the catch. That's all. No runs. No hits. One man left and one error. Last half of the fifth inning. And at the end of five innings, the totals. Two runs. On four hits and two errors. For the Cardinals, two runs. Three hits and one error for the Yankees. And then, this marks the fifth consecutive World Series that the Gillette Safety Razor Company has been very proud to bring you these great classics. The Yankees are afield. Spread Chandler on the mound. Bill Dickey with the tools on, back of the plate. First base is Nick Etten. Finishing up. This is the climax of his first year in the American League after spending two with the Phillies in the National. Joe Gordon is at second base. At shortstop, Frank Frazetti. And at third base, is rookie Bill Johnson, who has been one of the strong men in the new Yankee cast this year, which moved to its seventh pennant in the last eight seasons in the American Loop. The outfield and left is the mighty uh, 
Charlie Keller. Center field, Johnny Mendel. And in right field, George Steinbach. Boys calling Tuck or Tucker. The first hitter for the Cardinals will be Harry Walker, who's closing out his first full Major League campaign. Closing it out with a burst of glory. He hit 295, and I think unless memory is thrown me for about a 10-yard loss, he had the longest consecutive game hitting streak of any batter in either Major League this past summer. Harry Walker has a little custom of staining with a dark paint the hitting surface of his bat. It's like he has a two-tone piece of wood. He crouches a tall left-hand hitter and takes a slow curve just under the hands, above the knees, for a call strike. So far, Chandler has pitched Harry Walker tight, right around the hand, back to his fourth Harry to pull, which he has on both occasions, fly balls to right field. That field toward right. Harry swings and fouls it right back off Bill Dickey's left knee. The ball then carried off the uh, catcher's underpinning and into the shin guards, played on by Eddie Rommel. Well, that was one foul tip that caused more damage than just strike two. Nothing in two. Chandler taking his time. Walks back to the mound. First man up in the sixth inning. Ball tied two and two. And the big crowd has sort of settled down with tense expectancy, watching to see which ball club will crack. Chandler into a vigorous pumping motion. Kicks, throws, a curve, swung on, and sharply fouled into the seats behind first base. That really went in there like a bullet. Nothing in two. Harry Walker stepping in. Guards up late from behind. He's always fidgety up there. Sort of a twitching tilly. Pulling in his cap. Has to get it just right to a minute degree. Has a fish low outside. Chandler tried to make him go fishing. Harry wouldn't. One ball, two strikes. First man up in the sixth inning. The Cardinals are wearing for the first time this year their new sweatshirts. There's a foul looped into the stands behind the Yankee dugout, which is on the third base side. The count holds at one and two. These new uh, sweatshirts have the sleeves stained a cardinal red. It's quite a bit of color to the already colorful and trim appearance of defending world champions. Walker, out of the box, fooling around with that cap. Now he steps in, lifts that stick right down by the knob. Chandler delivers, the curve swung on and missed for strike three. Curve breaking down under the shoulders and it was slightly taken off of, slowed up a little bit. That is the second strikeout for Spud. There's another strikeout victim back in the second inning when he fanned Sanders. Here is Stan Musial, who hit 357 in the pennant race, leads the National League by a very handsome margin. He is 0 for 2. No hits for two official at bats this afternoon. Crouching and takes a high outside fastball. Ball one. The outfield is straight away. Shortstop Grisetti is a step pinched in toward second base. Otherwise, the defense is straight away everywhere. Musial takes a good curve that's in there. One and one. This fellow gets way back in the box for a left-hand hitter. Grabs that stick down by the end. And then he just absolutely winds up with that bat. However, if you'll notice, he has that stick completely still, high in the air above his left ear when that pitch comes out. Steps up and then takes a change of pace for high outside. Ball two. And Chandler says he doesn't want to work with that ball anymore. He's accommodated. Right on by Rommel. Putting in another one. Chandler rubs it up, slipping his glove. But doesn't waste a great deal of time out there. Looks down, takes a sign from Bill Dickey. Chandler pumps, delivers, fastball swung on, hit down to a second. Here is Gordon up with on a big bounce, throws to first with time to spare, and Musial's out. Second to first. Two up, two down. Top half the sixth inning. Ball game battles on, tied tightly at two and two. Walker Cooper, who got the first hit of the ball game, was ultimately scored as the first run of the ball game, is up for his third at bat. Captain and catches a right-hand hitter. Takes a low, fast curve. Ball one. Two down, nobody on. Cooper bounced one. High off third baseman Johnson's glove back in the second inning. Sacrificed down to second base and scored on Spatz Marion's double. 
There's a fastball over. Good call strike. One and one. Chandler steps to the back of the rubber for the moment. Miller Southworth talking it up. He's his own third base coach. Mike Gonzalez coaching it first. The pitch is swung on, trickled foul. Across the third base line. One and two. Nobody on. Chandler working deliberately. And one thing that uh, I've noticed this afternoon, apparently it is each team's strategy not to let a pitcher stand out there and uh, make a batter wait too long. As soon as the pitcher starts taking too much time, the batters for both clubs have stepped out immediately. Chandler now works and misses high outside with a screwball. He tried to break that pitch outside and back into the plate. Just missed it. Two and two. Spud uh, using more deliberation between pitches than at any time this afternoon. Pitches two twos. There's a high foul ball coming up and back into the stands. Still two and two. Chandler, rubbing up a new ball, standing at the rear of the mound. Blows on the fingers of his pitching hand. Looks into the ground. Now delivers again. Two and two. A curve swung on. Fouled up and back. Right underneath us. Almost uh, about a foot high. And she to come right into this mutual Gillette broadcasting box. Cooper, square stance, swinging from the end. He's a big fellow, over six feet. Swings, hits a fastball, sharp at a short. Cresetti juggles it, recovers, and then can't throw. And Cresetti is handcuffed by this ball hit at him at shortstop by Walker Cooper. And the big catcher is safely on at first base. Two out, top of the sixth inning in the game, tied at two and two. It's an error for Cresetti. So this gives the Yankees their second error. It's two runs and two errors for each team. Wendy Kowalski, who put the curtains on the series last year, right here in this ballpark. It was an overcast afternoon. Through the mist and fog, Kowalski hammered one into the left field stand. That broke it up. He's a strong, blonde, right-hand hitter. Swings and fouls one right back into Bill Dickey's mask. Strike one. Two men out. Kowalski up. Everything even in the column that counts. Runs. Two apiece. Chandler pitches. Kowalski swings. Hits the ground ball. That second baseman Gordon is up with throws. The first Kowalski's out. Trying to hit behind the runner and in the right field. He bounced out. Second baseman to the first sector. No runs. No hits. One man left and one error. That's the story for the top half of the sixth inning, and it is still two and two. Friends, over at the New Yorker last evening, where the Cardinals are staying while they're in town, I had a chance to show Stan Musial how Gillette technicians make absolutely certain that the Gillette Blue Blade is factory sharp when you buy it. And maybe you've never noticed, but every Gillette Blue Blade is anchored to its waterproof wrapper in such a way that the edges cannot touch or rub against the paper. Stan didn't know, and perhaps you don't either that a razor blade can be dulled in its own package. But that's the fact, and the reason that loosely wrapped blades are easily ruined in handling and shipment. Next time you take a new Gillette blade out of its envelope, note how firmly it's anchored, how safely its edges are protected. That's one of many reasons this far superior blade always shaves you more smoothly and comfortably than those of ordinary manufacture. For the sixth inning, Cardinals of field. The Yankees will present in this order Cresetti, Johnson, and Keller. Max Lanier on the mound. Catcher and Captain Walker Cooper. Back of the plate. The infield is Sanders at first. Second, fine. Shortstop slats Marion. The octopus. He just gobbles up everything. Hit his direction. And at third, Kowalski. And here's the first pitch coming down to Cresetti. Right hand hitter who swings on it. It's a line drive. But Kowalski knocks down. Recovers. Throws to first. Not in time. Close play on which Sanders turns and makes a kick to 
First place umpire Fiends ridden, but Ridden quickly walks away and Sanders doesn't follow up. And Cassetti is on. He had a high line drive. Pulaski went up beautifully and got his glove on the ball but couldn't hold it. Knocked it down. Chased it a couple of steps. Threw into the dirt. Sanders made a beautiful pick up at first base. However, not in time, and it is a base hit for Frank Cassetti. Swing on the first pitch ball. Open the last to sixth inning. Game all tied. Totals are identical now at 2 4 2. Two runs, four hits, and two errors for each team. Bill Johnson up, and Connors, of course, have to look for a bunt. And there it is. Pushed down to a first base and foul. Johnson trying to move Cassetti down to second with a bunt. Called it off. Strike one. The outfield for St. Louis is Danny Litwala in left field instead of Harry Walker. And in right field, Stan Musio. Musio last year, if you recall, played left field here at the stadium in the series. Right field was held down by Country Florida. There is a pitch outside. Johnson leaning as though he would bunt and took it when he saw it was not in the strike zone. One and one. One ball, one strike. Everything counts. The game isn't in its final stages by any means. But it's no longer so very young. Last to the sixth inning, all tied, two and two. And Neil throws to first. Is that he steps back on? Krasky in close, bunt third base. Sanders ready to dash in. There's a bunt foul across the first base line again. There's a high inside pitch. Johnson holding his bat right across the letters on his uniform blouse. Tried to butt it. Didn't straighten it out. One and two. Johnson digs in. Lanier, no hurry. Cresetti steps down off first. Infield up one or two steps. There's a swinging, uh, bounding ball that is through in the center field. There's Cresetti around second base and then holds on. The throw goes toward third and Cresetti stays put at second on a base hit. And Johnson comes up with his second World Series safety. He had a beautiful bond his last time up. And so the rookie now has two for three. And activity begins down in the Cardinal bullpen. Laurie Dixon is down there. Charlie Keller stepping in. Runners at first and second. There's a curve away from him outside. The ball one. Takes a curve ball over for a false strike. One and one. Charlie's all business up there. Grabs that plate from behind. Shows that stick about an inch. Runners lead off first and second. Nobody out. Keller swings and hits a high fly ball into short right field. Musial waits under it. Makes the catch and the runners stay where they were. Presetti at second base. And of course Johnson at first. That's one out. Put out for the right fielder. And here is Joe Gordon stepping in. The Yankees this year hit for a team total 100 home runs, which is the 19th consecutive season they have hit 100 or better home runs a year. And that they hit 100 was due to Joe Gordon, who with a club's time at 99, on the next to the last day of the season, hit that 100. And then the next Yankee home run was Gordon's home run back in the fourth inning. Goes one for two. Hit the big one. His last at bat. Right hand hitter. Third ball is good above the knees for a call strike. Nothing in one. I field around toward left. Cassetti off second base. Johnson off first. Near in position. Checks the run at second. Out pitches. Gordon swings and misses. Low curve ball under his hands. Strike two. Apparently, Gordon has been up there with a the hit on all the way. Nothing in two. Fletcher hauling something to Cresetti, pushing him down off second. Here's the pitch. It is low and bounces into the air and gets away from Walker Cooper. He can't find it. And Lanier goes for it. Here is Cresetti coming for the plate and he scores. And down the third base goes Johnson. The run is in. A low pitch hits the ground in back of the plate and hits 
caught of Ketchup Cooper's glove and bounced high into the air, as high as the top of a two-story house. And uh, Walker Cooper ran over toward the Yankee dugout. He couldn't find the ball. He was completely mystified. It was up in the air all the time. He never thought to look there. He was looking on the ground, and he couldn't find it. The ball was in the air. And when he finally found it, the ball landed just and rolled toward the Cardinal dugout in that general direction. So Cooper never got there. Lanier himself came down to recover and threw the ball back to the plate to Kowalski, who came up. But by that time, Cassetti had come across to score, and Johnson went to third, and it is a wild pitch charge to Lanier. And it is 3-2, to two, favor the Yankees. One man out. Johnson, who was on first as the pitcher, goes to third. And it is one ball, two strikes to Gordon. Infield up. Joe swings, fouls it into the ground, and it is still one and two. And that was a wild pitch that really was wild. It was low as it went over the plate. It hit the ground and hit the catcher's mitt. And then bounced up into the air, and as it hung there, the Yankee runners took a notch. And then when they realized that uh, the ball couldn't be found for the moment, they came on and took another one. Two base, wild pitch. Gordon crouches and swings at the high foul ball out of the park behind third base. Up and over the stand. Presetti has really led a charm life out there on the bases. He got on through an error. So second base and his uh, path of stealing it in the fourth is very easy because the catcher overthrew in the center field. Then he was moved around on a single and a double play. Here he just scored from second base on a wild pitch. Gordon swinging, fouls another one back. Still one and two. I feel very much toward left. The biggest hole is right center. The mayor is used to going his best when the going is the toughest. He's bearing down out there. Cardinal infield in close, trying to keep this runner on at third. The pitch to the plate. Swung on and missed for strike three. And Lanier used a knuckleball and struck out Joe Gordon. That for Max is his seventh strikeout. That's the only important second out with that man roosting at third base from the standpoint of the Cardinal defense strategy. Here's Bill Dickey up. 0 for 2. Thrown out third to first in the second inning and popped to short in the fourth. A 10 hitter. Infield now back. Dickey swings, hits a bounding ball, foul behind third base. Strike one. Bob and Bill and I are anxiously awaiting the official figures on this crowd. We have an idea, looking around, seeing the fact that there are no seats, that this may be the World Series crowd of history. Focus to attendance and ask the money. Near, ready to work again, delivers over for a call, second strike. Nothing in two. Dickey turns and walks out of the box. Now gets in again. Last of the sixth inning, the Yankees have forged ahead on that very odd and eccentric wild pitch. Bounced high into the air. Walker Cooper couldn't find it. Dickey takes a curve low outside for ball one. One and two. Johnson taking his lead off third base and foul ground, so if hit by a batted ball, he would not be automatically out, though he in fair ground. A throw, swung on, and there is a loop of going into short right center, and it's in for a base hit. Johnson scores, and Dickey holds on. A Texas League single in the short right center field. Fine went back just to top speed, but he was a half step away. Harry Walker could not come in, and Stan Musial was locked out. He had no chance. And Dickey drops one in. So it is now 4-2. to Favor the Yankees. Run batted in for Dickey. Johnson scores. All these runs in the 60s, too, are to be scored as earned. 4-2. to Favor the Yankees. Here now is Nick Atten. A 10 batter. Sharp curve is good above the knees for a call strike. Nothing in one. Near, hanging in there. This has been a rough inning for him. This last of the sixth. The Yankees now lead 4-2. There's a pitch high. And it is 4-1. 1-1. One one. One a 
Now, Pugh put right on Etten. He's left straight to the Cardinals, and Lanier, and vice versa. The pitch inside. Nutluck. Ball two. Lanier peering down intently, taking the side walk, Cooper. The pitch is swung on. There is a fly ball into short left center. Litwala comes over, and the left fielder grabs it for the out. So the Yankees in the sixth inning picked up two runs, three hits. One man left. There were no errors, and that ends the sixth inning. Friends, government regulations prevent us saying anything about the weather here today, but this we can ask. Why be cold this winter? It's up to all of us to get ready right now for the tough weather ahead. Fuel, coal, oil, and gas is going to be scarce, mighty scarce. And when you say fuel, you help add to the supply needed for fighting the war. And you help release manpower and equipment needed for the same purpose. Now here's how to save fuel for your country and assure warmth and comfort for the family this winter. First, keep temperatures at 65 degrees during the day. Don't heat unused rooms. Keep windows closed. Draw window shades at night. Shut off heat when weather permits. Keep furnace in top condition. Use less hot water. Remember, fuels are weapons of war. Save your share. Don't leave this job to George. Everybody must do his full share. Or a lot of us will be cold this winter. So save fuel in the simple, easy ways I've mentioned. Chandler has never won a World Series game. Chandler delivers, and Chandler swings, hits a line drive. It's in the right field for a base hit. A sharp single. Long single, driven into right field, as the Cardinals hope that this will be the beginning of a successful counterattack on their part. Single to right. These two great Cardinals go battling along. Here now is Danny Litwala. Strong right-hand batter. Who is another Major League ball player that you can say is a surgeon's gift to the game? But while I take strike. A few years ago, and he was a minor league player, he hurt a knee so badly that several Major League clubs gave up wanting one as a prospect. The Phillies picked him up and was paid for the operation, and thus they got a Major League ball player. But while I takes a pitch inside, ball one. Danny was dealt to the Cardinals, you recall, after the season opened this year. One ball, one strike. Sanders stepping down off first base. Etten holding the bag against him. Chandler delivers a curve on the outside. Wallow lets it go. Ball two. Two and one. The score is four to two. Favor the Yankees. Some message is being sent down to the St. Louis bullpen. Cardinal bat boy just been skipping down there carry a few words. Chandler pitches inside and high for ball three. Lickweiler represents the potential tying run, so Chandler, of course, has to be very careful. The runner on at first base, nobody out, 3-1 count. That message to the bullpen was for some of those relief pitchers to start getting ready in the event that Southworth wanted to pinch hit for Lanier here in this inning. The throw... In for a strike. But while apparently had the take on, he automatically took it, and he sort of automatically went into the uh, batter's offense of taking a step down towards first base to say, oh, gee, there's ball four. However, Danny didn't even turn around. Then and Rama recalled him, and it's not three and two. The three-two foot swung on as a high fly ball into short center field. Back goes shortstop to Zetti, and he makes the catch. Returning to first base very quickly is the runner, Ray Sanders. So it is now one out. Chandler behind 3-1. Played the next one in and then came back with a good pitch which was popped up prior to the shortstop. Marion, who cracked that line drive that handcuffed first baseman Etten, went for two bases back in the second inning and got in the first run. Marion, one for two, bounced out to Gordon to Etten in the fifth inning. Right hand batter, stands well back in the box. It's a high inside three-quarter speed curve. Ball one. Southworth continually talking it up from back of third base. He's an indomitable little figure. 
had a great deal to do with the success of his ball club. Has a quick curve over. Good one for a ball strike with one and one. Marion, very easy moving. He's the call. He can reach right over into the next county. Steps up. Swings and hits a drive down toward the left field corner. It's close to the line. It is just foul. Just missing by a foot being a home run. Bill Stewart, the third base umpire, set himself. You can see him bracing, following the flight of that ball, marking it against the left field foul pole marker. And you can see plate umpire Rommel, both trained observers, watching that ball like a hungry chicken hawk. And just as soon as it went past that foul pole, out went their hands, as though they were geared together. Foul. I think if there's anything that we uh, Americans don't particularly appreciate about our game of baseball, it's the fine work of the umpires. You know, without those fellows, what they bring to the game, and our deep-seated belief in their decisions, we couldn't have baseball. They do a great job. That's one and two. Marion sets. He's going to try it again. Still 4-2 favor the Yankees. Chandler delivers. Pitch inside by the knees. Ball two. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. But that was close. Down in the left field corner. Chandler works. Fastball swung on. Foul back. Still two and two. Two balls, two strikes. One man out. Top of the seven. Yankees lead by two runs, four to two. Chandler, who wears number 21, is looking for his 21st victory of the year. He won 20 of them in the pennant campaign. Delivers. There's a ground ball hit to Gordon, who's up with it. Goes back to the center, one out to throw the first. Double play. That double play was a hunting. That's the Yankees' first so far in the 1943 Classic. And it was the quick, easy way. Gordon to Presetti, those two veterans throwing on to be getting it first. Yep. Friends, the quick, easy way is by far the best way to shave. So you just ought to get acquainted with today's easy shaving Gillette Blue Blade. That double play was the second baseman with a shortstop. On to the first baseman, and now each ball club has one DP to its credit. The Cardinals function, and it was an identical uh, double play. Second baseman Klein, two shortstop Marion, and on to the first second, who's Sanders, back in the fourth inning. The Yankees come in for the last half of the seventh. Lanier on the mound for St. Louis. We'll go over the ball club very quickly. Lanier and Cooper, the battery. Sanders at first base, at second Klein. Shortstop Marion and at third Karowski. In the outfield, Litwiler. In left. In center, Harry Walker. Long legged, he can go. In right field, Stan Musial. The umpires, Rommel, back of the plate, Reardon at first, Rue at second, and Stewart at third. Johnny Lindell, big towering right hand batter. Price has been up, and each time the near struck him out. First step, last of the seventh, then pitch the channel in the top of the order. There's a curve ball that hangs on the outside. Not coming in enough. Thrown by a tandem to a right-hand hitter. Ball one. And Bell, 245, regular season. Swings, hits a high fly ball deep into left center. Littweiler having to go, Harry Walker having to go. And it's center field to Harry Walker for the catch. And Bell is out. Put out to the center fielder. And here's Chandler coming to the plate. And the applause is growing as he walks up toward batter's box. Stud steps in. He has one for two. He really made a quick profit out of Bob back there in the third inning. Bob said he's a good hitting pitcher. Bang. Base hit. Just like that. There's a high outside pitch to Chandler that bounces off Walker Cooper's mitt. 
And it is ball one. That field toward left. A couple of steps. Infield back. Camera crouches. Swings and misses. And he goes all the way around taking a cut. One and one. That was an almost unbelievable sight back in the sixth inning, seeing that wire pitch go high into the air. It went up and up and seemed to hang there, and Cooper, walking around looking for it, couldn't find it. There's a pitch uh, low outside, four ball two. Cooper didn't have his mask off, which is pretty hard to be looking around. Of course, when you have to move in a split second and a jam, it's uh, pretty tough. There is a swing and a miss for strike two. Two and two, two balls, two strikes. Neil stands there, sturdy, stocky, southpaw. He's a tough fellow to beat. Delivers. There's a drive hit out toward left center. Litwaller going, Walker going, and Harry Walker, a great one handed catch. If I didn't know that was Harry Walker, I'd swear that would have been Terry Moore the way he caught it. Going deep, deep back into the almost extreme depth of left center. Harry Walker, running like an antelope. Pulled that one down, reaching high up with his gloved hand. Gary Moore, Rod DiMaggio, the two absent center fielders. Couldn't have improved on that one. Here now is George Steinbeck. Swings and misses. Pitch was up under the shoulders. Strike one swinging, and it's two out. That is the fielding play so far today. Boy, he was really going for that throw on the outside, and it is ball one. One and one. Staying back, who is leading off. And his left hander working for the Cardinals. He's going over for three. Lined out to third base for Karowski in the first inning. Struck out in the third. There's a foul back, and it is now one and two. And then George hit a fly ball to the left field of Littweiler in the fifth. Well, you're not going to see a center fielder go any farther than Harry Walker went for that one. He really had wings in his feet. Near delivers. Fastball swung on a line drive to the left field. It's a crisp single for Stainback. Litwala traps it, throws in the second, and George holds it first. Two down and a single in the left field. Hit number one for Stainback. Hit number seven for the Yankees. And hit number 12 for the afternoon. The Yankees ahead four to two. Bob, you'll check me on these totals as we go along so we keep them straight and don't get them all tangled. But the batter is Frank Crisetti. Single is last at bat. One for three. Lanier throws the first. Not in time. Sanders returns. Crisetti crouches, feet wide apart. Takes pitch outside. Ball one. Scoring. St. Louis got a run in the second. The Yankees got two in the fourth. The Cardinals came back to tie with a run in the fifth. The Yankees got two in the sixth. There's a high, high pop fly behind first base. Sanders backing up along the line makes the catch one step inside fair ground. For the Yankees, no runs, one hit, one man left. The Cardinals, no errors. And that ends the seventh inning. Men in our armed forces here in abroad are now receiving Gillette blades in a special khaki and green package. It's called the Camouflage Package and is available only at post exchanges, ship service stores, and similar military outlets. The blades in this distinctive package are of real Gillette quality from edge to edge. So if you're a soldier or sailor and purchase Gillette blades in the new Camouflage Package, you get shaves worth writing home about. And this is a ball game that is really worth writing home about. We're moving now into the eighth inning. And Lanier has finished pitching for today. Deb Garms, a couple of years ago, who won the batting championship when he was a member of the Pirates in the National League, then went out and played a year in the Pacific Coast and was brought back and has been the uh, spare part man, both outfield and infield alike, and pinch hit a deluxe for the Cardinals this year. Deb Garms is swinging a couple of sticks. And he will hit first as we move into the eighth inning. 
number nine, batting for Lanier. Deb Gorms this year hit uh, 265 in the current season, and Lanier, after seven innings, is finished. Max gave up four runs, only the second two were earned. It's sort of an oddity in scoring, uh, the way you figure the earned runs against Lanier. Because, of course, the first run the Yankees got was completely unearned. It was through Lanier's own error that Presetti, who scored that first run, got a life on base. And uh, then, of course, you would think that uh, Gordon's home run would be an earned run, but it wasn't because, according to the scoring, had there not been the error, Gordon would never have even batted in the fourth inning. And uh, the, the runs uh, that came in in the sixth inning were set up by the wild pitch, but they're earned because an earned run is basically a run that the pitcher is responsible for. So Deb Gorms, a ten batter, leans over the plate, crouches from behind. Chokes that bat, uses a brown piece of wood. Tanner pitches over, sort of a slider, for a call strike. That's one of Spud's most effective pitches. That's the pitch that is thrown like the fastball and has a break, but it's a quick one, not a big one. Gorms swings and pulls a ground ball down foul behind first base. Gorms is the type batter who's going to get a piece of that ball most times. Not the distance hitter, but he's a punch hitter. First punch hitter of the 1943 World Series. Beginning of the eighth inning. Four to two of the Yankees. Cardinals needing two or trying to get him. Dom takes a low inside curve. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Dom's, uh, I think it'll surprise most people to know it, and surprise a lot of ball players, is one of the fastest men on his feet in the business. Takes a pitch that is high, four ball two. I know the Cardinals are surprised at spring training camp this year. This veteran came walking in, they had a foot race. And, uh, of course, before a foot race is training camp, there's usually two or three days of argument. And nobody had been picking Gorms, and he ran away with the whole thing. Deb swings and misses for strike three, and Chandler slowed up on him and gave him that screwball and struck him out. This is strike at number three. And ladies and gentlemen, there is a magnificent aerial show going on overhead. service planes in a salute to the series which reminds us of last year. You'll recall when the bomber flew over and which uh, Billy South voice boy was in flew over at St. Louis. Several just went over a moment ago. It was great. They went over nothing flat. Lou Klein swings on the first pitch and hits a fly ball into right center and it is in for a base hit. So Klein stepping in with one man out dropped a single into right center field. He dropped it right in the spot between the right fielder, the center fielder, and the second baseman. And Harry Walker stepping in. Just who will be the relief pitcher for St. Louis against the Yankees in the last the eighth inning, we don't know. There are three pitchers in the bullpen, and at the stadium, you cannot see who is working in the bullpen. They're completely hidden from view. We can't see them for you until they actually come out and step up on the outfield grass. Harry Walker has gone 0 for 3. Gets in. Fine with a base hit. Leaves down off first. Walker crouches and takes a curve inside under the hands. They've really tried to pitch him that way all afternoon. Been doing it. All one. Fine base hit to hit number six of Chandler. But works, and there is a bounding ball hit slowly to third, and just in time is a play at second base, no play at first, of course, at second. Johnson up with it, through unerringly to Joe Gordon. Fine was forced at second base. A half speed trickler. Johnson had to charge that one, and he did. Didn't lose any time. Third baseman to the second baseman. Harry Walker with a force out on it first, and two men are gone. And there, of course, was another salute. And there still is another. I'm telling you, it's a great sight to see some of our big ships go by. When you see them go by, you can actually see why you've been buying war bonds and why you should be buying more of them. 
Bill Dickey, Fred Chandler, having a little conference, standing midway between the plate and the mound. The Yankees have gone ahead in the leading, 4-2. to two. Chandler working with consummate care, great deliberation, especially the musical. That's why the conference is now with uh, the wise and experienced Bill Dickey. Musial, who's developed into the game's great natural hitter, are today. No challenge to that for this season. He's the boy. Chandler then calls Etten over to him, and they meet halfway between first base and the mound. The spread tells the first baseman how he wants him to play with Harry Walker on and the way he's going to pitch to Musial. Well, we'll see what happens. Chandler delivers. Musial takes low outside. Fast curve. All one. Two down, top of the eighth. Right fielder Stain back is straight away. Left fielder Keller is straight away. Center fielder Lindale's a couple of steps toward left. The pitch swung on as a line drive in the right for a base hit. Around second base goes Harry Walker, and then he holds on. The throw goes all the way to third, and Harry goes back in the second. hit into right field by Stan Musial his first hit of the series and he hit that one just as authoritatively that Gillette Blue Blades make all over the world so the tying run is at first base that was hit number 7 for the Cardinals here's the big catcher Walker Cooper mighty dangerous man up there with the lumber Chandler knows it there's activity in the Yankee bullpen Outfield toward left on Walker, who swings, hits a bounding ball to third. Johnson up with it to throw to second in time for the force on Musial, and that's all for the threat. Force play, the third baseman to the second sacker. No runs, two hits, both of them left. And it is four to two, favor the Yankees, and that ends the first half of the eighth inning. I'm known manager Joe McCarthy for many years, and can vouch that he raises just about as tough a cup of whiskers as any man in the American League. But if you ask Joe, he'll tell you that shaving's no chore at all. Mighty quick and refreshing, in fact, when you soften your beard with Gillette shaving cream and whisk it off with today's Gillette Blue Blade. You know, fans, by giving wiry stubble a good soaking, you take all the back talk out of it. That's where Gillette shaving cream comes in. Take Gillette Rustless, for example. Put it on while your beard's good and wet, and it holds the moisture right against your bristles thoroughly saturating them all the time you're shaving. You'll be surprised, and I mean pleasantly, at the speed and ease of shaving this way. More than that, you like Gillette Brushless because it's greaseless. Won't clog your razor or bathroom drains. Ask your dealer for a Gillette shaving cream, lather or brushless, only a quarter. Coming in for St. Louis is Bracken. B R W E C H E N. A lot of folks call it Brasheen, but uh, he says that he and his family call it Bracken. That's good enough for us. I think the first rule in pronunciation of grammar is uh, that you pronounce a proper name the way a fellow wants it pronounced. He won nine and lost six in his rookie year. He's a left-hander, and the Cardinals call him the Cat. That's the impression they get the way he feels his position. He can really feel it. He's a fifth infielder. He's also slightly bow-legged, and he moves around just sort of like a cat. He gives you that impression. He's very quick when he gets ready to pitch, but he deliberates and takes a long time. You can write a letter home sometimes when he's in a jam between pitches. So Harry Bracken coming on to relieve. as we're going to the last of the eighth inning when the Yankees are ahead 4-2. to two. Friends, we're going to take a few seconds now to identify the stations. This is Mutual. This is WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago. Bill Johnson, first up, last the eighth. The first pitch is swung on and fouled back. That had now Harry Bracken coming right down. And so Southworth continues to spin his top call plans against the Yankees. Two pitchers, both other left-handers. Bill believes in his left-handers. He threw them constantly two years in his tough series in the league. 
There's a swing and a miss. Low curve. Strike two. Here's a kid finishing up his rookie year and being called upon for the first World Series game he's been around to finish it up. Johnson, rookie opposing him. Two for three. Swings, hits a slow bounding ball that Bracken off the mound. Picks up the throws to first base and the cat throws him out. Yes, sir. He can get off that mound and field it. And Johnson is out. Pitcher to first. Now stepping in is Charlie Kellogg. Dark, glowering up there at the plate. Never darker and never more glowering than when he comes up late in the ball game, 0 for 3. Bracken Stedison stands back of the mound, revving up the ball. One out. The Yankees at bat and leading 4 2, last three eighth inning, first game of the 1943 series. Keller digs in. Curve is over. Good, above the knees. Nothing in one. The outfield is very much toward right. They play color the hip in that direction. Big hole is left center. Right out toward the flagstaff. Right side of the infield is deep. Both the first and second baseman at the edge of the right field grass. Keller crouches. Takes a fastball that's high outside. One and one. Bracken wants everything just right. Takes the side. Now he pumps once. Comes down. Low inside for ball two. Took that one overhand. Goes to the rear of the mound. Takes a handkerchief out of his pocket. He's very cool. Just like he was sitting on the back porch eating a slice of watermelon. Now he finally turns around. Keller digs in. Bracken still makes him wait. Now the left hander goes to work, comes down. Keller swings at the line drive in the right field. It's a base hit. Musial takes on the second bounce, and Keller comes up with his first hit this series. A long single, about 10 feet fair, inside the right field foul line. So I guess Keller, for well, that base hit, says, I don't mind waiting. Single to right. And this is hit number one of Bracken, and hit number eight for the Yankees. They have scattered their hits over seven different batters. The one who has two is Johnson. The fellows who have no hits are Etten and Lindell. Here's Gordon, who has the biggest hit so far. 400 foot four master. Joe, right hand hitter, picks a fastball that's outside, ball one. One away, last of the eight. Keller at first. Ray Sanders, Paul Spring Bean, first baseman, holding the bag against him. Out to deep, around foot left. Gordon takes an inside curve under the hand, ball two. Activity is still going on apace in the Cardinal bullpen. Young Bracken out there on the mound. Comes down out of his stretch. Delivers. And his fastball misses for ball three just outside. He wanted to get even with that one very, very much. Gordon steps out, and I think it's indicative that he takes a quick look at Fletcher to see whether he can hit or take. Yankees, once they get ahead, they really like to pour it on. Bracken delivered of uh, hits at the shoulders when that pitch was uh, turned loose. I think he was free to swing if he wanted to. He gave every fella lead to a four. The run and hit was on. Not a hit and run play. On a hit and run play, the batter must go after the pitch, no matter where it is. But on a uh, run and hit play, which is always put on, this type with uh, the count at least three balls, the batter has the choice if he thinks the pitch will be ball four to take it, which Gordon did. Tell him move down to second. So it's a base on balls. That's the first given up to the Yankees. And here is Bill Dickey getting in. Dropped a single in the right center, his last at bat. Bills one for three. Yankees threatening and already lead four to two. Last of the eighth inning, one out. Bracken pitches and Dickey takes a high inside fast pitch. Ball one. Right side of the infield up one step, left side up two. Outfield, a couple of bases foot right. That's the defense pattern against Dickey. Bracken works and it's fastball low for ball two, and Bracken motions that he doesn't want to pitch with that ball again. He's missed with it his last six tries. Eddie Rommel makes the switch. Gives him another one.
Harry in position, comes down. A curve is over for a call, strike one. One. Dickey takes a toe hold. A square stance right off the plate. Gordon off first. Keller off second. There's called strike two. Fastball that catches the inside, just off the hand. Two and two. Bracken very deliberate. The game now is two hours old. All the pitchers have been taking that time all afternoon. The two two pitch south. That is out number two. The last of the eighth inning, and it is the eighth Yankee to go down on strikes. Here is Nick Atten, who's gone off for three, and this is his first World Series game. The runners, of course, are ready to go on anything. Atten sets. Very much an open stance. He's a big fellow, broad back. Little Bracken. Angular left-handed pitches, and Etten swings, hits the drive in the left field. Litwell has to come in a big hurry, and he makes a nice running catch of it, leaning down to his knees. And that finishes up the threat. Nice put out by the left fielder, no runs, one hit. Two men left. So at the end of eight innings, for the Cardinals, as they come to bat, going into the night, two runs, seven hits, and two errors. For the Yankees, four runs on eight hits. And the Yankees also have two errors. Chandler, who has suffered two previous defeats in World Series competition, now walks to the mound with a two-run lead. Three outs to go in quest of his first World Series win. He's had a magnificent year, one of the great years in the all-time annals of Major League pitching. And, of course, to top any great year, there is nothing better than a World Series successor to it. Billy Southworth, very confident, very trim. Goes walking jauntily down toward third base. He's got a lot of bounce, that fella. First up for the Cardinals will be Kurowski. Followed by Sanders. And then by Litwala. There's activity. And rest assured in the Yankee bullpen. Backing up Chandler in case he has trouble. These are two tough ball clubs. And the Yankees certainly can't go into this ninth inning with any great feeling of confidence with a two-run lead, remembering what happened in the ninth inning of the first game of the World Series last year. The Cardinals almost turned it around right then and there at St. Louis. Two great ball clubs. Each inning, each day, anything can happen. First pitch is over to Kurowski. Ball strike. Nothing in one. First man up in the ninth. Krowski steps out. Time is called by the plate umpire. Now George digs in. The pitch swung, hit, just fouled behind third base. Johnson made the stop. He was taking no chances. Ball went foul. Not by much, but by enough. Strike two. That was a screwball that Karowski is very happy did go foul. He broke his bat on it. The pitch was coming down inside, and Karowski went after it. And then when he connected, he hit it just above the thumb because the ball was breaking back into his hands. Nothing in two. Karowski firmly planted in the middle of the box. Out to toward left. Chandler pitches. Karowski swings as a sharp ground ball to short. Presetti up. The throw to first. In time. Karowski out by two steps. The Yankee lead of two runs is now two outs away from being sufficient. The Cardinals have the two outs left to do something about it. Karowski out. Well hit ball, but at the shortstop. Short to first, and here is Sanders, who after strike out in the second inning has had singled his last two tries. Two for three. Chandler pitches him low outside, missing him for ball one. Sanders, who's had a great year, Tan batter takes a curve ball in for a call strike. Johnny Hoff at the start of the year had a bad back and a bad neck. Sanders got his chance to play first base regularly. 
and he played it in such fashion that when Hop did get well again, he had to make a bid for left field. Sanders takes inside under the hands for ball two. Two and one. Ray is very loose up there at the plate. Digs in. Sandler comes down. Sanders swings and misses. That was the screwball. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Every time there's a lull in the crowd, you can hear the shrill, piping tones of the incessant chattering of shortstop Cresetti. As it fits low outside, and the count runs full to three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Sanders set. One man out, nobody on. The pitch is swung on as a line drive right to Cresetti, who holds it for the out. He took the ball just about an inch off the skin part of the left side of the infield. So it's two gone. And the Cardinals are now down to their last out here in this first game of the 1943 World Series. Score stands four to two in favor of the Yankees. And here are the crowd and financial figures. The total attendance is 68,676. So this was not the biggest all-time crowd. There was a bigger one last year. And the total receipts, $265,980. The first pitch to Danny Litwala is over for a call strike. Chandler pitching steadily. Reads the sign. Hung out by Bill Dickey. Bill stays down on his haunches. Low back of the plate. The pitch. Swung on, hit right back to the mound. Chandler has it. Close to first, and the ball game is over. The Yankees win it 4-2, to two, and Chandler goes galloping off, and he has now added on to his 20 great games in the regular season. This one here for his first World Series win. It was a strongly uh, played ball game, but I won't get into any of the uh, details of the facts and figures at all, because I see that Bill Corum is working his way up through the press fans, and he'll be here in another moment to summarize the highlight of today's game for you. Before Bill takes over, I want to tell you why so many major leaguers, men like Ray Sanders, and Danny Litwala, and Spud Chandler, to name a few, go all the way out in praising today's Gillette Blue Blade. The fact is, no other blade in all this world is as sharp and easy shaving. Gillette technicians spent years not to mention millions of dollars, perfecting the specialized machines and instruments used in producing the Gillette Blue Blade. Needless to say, this precision equipment is exclusive with Gillette. Now it stands to reason that without comparable facilities, it is impossible to manufacture a blade as keen and durable as this. So fans, is it any wonder that today's Gillette Blue Blade gives so much more shaving comfort and all-round satisfaction than ordinary blades? Well, Bill Corum's over at the other microphone. Bill, how have you seen it this afternoon? Well, Red, I've seen it as a kind of a wild and woolly ball game in which the pitching stood out, particularly that of Spud Chandler, who the best pitcher in the American League, as most of us know, turned in a good pitching performance here this afternoon to turn back the Cardinals 4-2, to two, the same score by which the Cardinals won the last game of the last World Series. Chandler was a master, and a good many of the hits and some of the runs came on misplays and uh, freak plays of various kinds, but he wasn't a great deal better than Max Lanier, who pitched beautiful ball for the Cardinals and had plenty of trouble of his own. Uh, the totals, 4, 8, and 2, according to my scorecard for the Yankees, 2, 7, and 2 for St. Louis. Now, I'm pretty sure that's correct. The scoreboard in front of me says 4, 9, and 2, but it's official. I have it correct. 4, 8, and 2 for the New York Yankees. 2, 7, and 2 for the St. Louis Cardinals. The standout playing, aside from uh, Chandler's pitching, was turned in by Joe Garden at second base, as fine second base play as I've ever seen on any ball field in any World Series. And I'm starting now my 24th without ever having missed a game, so I've seen quite a lot of World Series play. Garden had four put outs, eight assists, and started one double play and turned in some fielding down plays down there that were absolute gems. 
course, he also hit a home run to duplicate his home run in about to the same spot of last year's series, and naturally it figured in the scoring, although only by one run. However, the misplays, I think, really told the story of the game. The Cardinals weren't as jittery as they were in the first game last year in St. Louis, but in spite of playing all those hound dog records and their favorite uh, phonograph records down in the clubhouse and doing a lot of singing before the, they came out on the field this afternoon, they still were not very hot of field. Uh, around first base, a play in which Lanier himself figured hurt them badly, and Fine was a little bit uh, on the jittery side. I thought at uh, second base, although he too, as well as Garden, made one or two brilliant plays. That was the story of a game which... Uh, will not be remembered as one of the greatest and won't be the greatest in this series, I am reasonably sure, because uh, they, these teams will both play better ball when they settle down. The Cardinals have no reason to feel completely out of it by any means. Anybody that beats Chandler is beating a great pitcher, and they hit him pretty well, especially in the closing innings when they began to close in on him, Musial getting his uh, first hit of the series in the eighth inning, and uh, Keller, also supposed to be the slugger for his side, King Kong, getting his first hit in the ninth. The hitters will tell in this series, and both teams can hit, we know. Of course, the Yankees didn't get that, Yankees didn't get that name, the Bombers, for nothing, and the old name they used to carry in the great days of Ruth and Gehrig up here at this stadium when they were known as Murderer's Row. And Bob Musil, too, of course, who figured in on that. Uh, I suppose Harry Brasheen uh, came in to uh, finish for Lanier, uh, I suppose that that means that Southworth will likely go with his big right-hander, Mort Cooper, tomorrow. That's just a guess. I haven't uh, asked him because uh, I haven't had the opportunity, but somebody told me in the press box before I came up that uh, he indicated that he would either pitch Cooper or Alpha Brazel in tomorrow's game. The left-handers did all right. Rasheen did very well, too. He's a cocky little fellow. He's not uh, uh, very big. But he has plenty of courage and excellent control, and he did all right in his relief role. Uh, I think Red gave you the total attendance, which wasn't a record, 68,676, with total receipts of $265,980. Those are the official figures, and once more I repeat the official figures on the runs, hits, and errors. Two errors for both sides, four runs and eight hits for the Yankees, two runs and seven hits for the Cardinals, and the same score by which... The Cardinals clinched the World Series last fall when Whitey Karowski hit that home run. Uh, I want to say again that I know if you keep staying with us, and I know these crowds are going to stay with us, I look for a bigger crowd before the series leaves here in the stadium. Uh, they're going to see better baseball than we saw this afternoon. It was a hard-fought game all the way, but uh, uh, not a brilliant uh, game aside from Gardens Fielding, and one stupendous play uh, terrific, in, as a matter of fact, by Harry Little Dixie Walker, brother of Big Dixie in center field for the cards. He robbed uh, Chandler of a possible triple, even possibly a home run inside the park by racing over into deepest left center field, snatching the ball in his gloved hand, going over Danny Litwiler's legs, rolling over three or four times like an acrobat, but coming up with the ball. By all odds, the outstanding single fielding feature of the game. The hitting was good, not terrific. Gordon's one home run and the only really long hit ball of the whole game uh, being the only thing outstanding in a hitting way. I think that pretty well, pretty well covers it, but plan to be with us tomorrow via radio for the second game of the series here at the stadium. Tuning time will be 1.15 Eastern War Time, same as today. So fans, until then, smooth sailing, smooth shaving, and good afternoon from your host, the Gillette Safety Razor Company, Red Barber, Bob Elson, and Uncle Bill Quarrel. This is Mutual. This is WGN, the voice of the people of Chicago.